lordy, lordy, lordy. Yeah, make sure it doesn't play the prom night trailer. And make sure it doesn't uh, play the music too much because then we'll get a content ID. <laughs> and be like, no, you can't do that. But, um... But well, yeah, might still be processing, but I definitely want to hear yeah. Leanne's thoughts for sure. Leanne and, um, I think, uh, my cousin, Missy, if she's still watching, if you are still watching what y'all think? Um, aren't there still paramedics outside the house? Yes. So there's a couple of things that I think the editing and the way that they sort of played that out, it didn't make much sense or it's confusing. But look at it. Here's how I interpreted that ending. First of all, I was shocked. I didn't think Karen was going to die. Number one. Number two. Um. Number two, so when they're there and they, they do the trap and they, they trap Michael and the gang gangs up on, uh, uh, oh, awesome, that's awesome. Uh, when the gang gangs up on Michael and they sort of try to take him out, Tommy says to Karen, go to your daughter. We got this. Um, she stabs him one time and... Um, you know, let's the, the gang, you know, the Haddonfield crew take care of the rest. She walks back, which if you remember, it's like the street next to it, parallel. She walks back to the Myers house outside where Allison is. And in between that time when she does that, that's when Michael pops up and does his thing. So Michael pops up, does his thing, takes everybody out without Karen even knowing. Him. And while she's sitting there with Allison, and just sort of talking and whatever. Uh, Michael's already done his thing, and Michael makes his way back to the house. Uh, she looks up at the window and sees, uh, you know, the child version of Michael in the window. And to me, that's just like that's just her. I'll get into that. But anyway, she sees a child a version of Michael in the window. She goes up to look out the window, and then uh, Michael kills her. And to me. Michael is, it's not that he got away from it and somehow teleport. People say like, oh, Michael teleports now. Michael already did his thing. To me, and Matt, you can talk about this. Michael was already in the house. When Ka I swear, I swear you can hear Michael breathing when she walks up the steps. When she walks up the steps, she walks through the door. You can hear Michael breathing, but they don't put it in the subtitles or anything else because you can't really, you, it's like real faint. But he's already in the house at that point. And there's a back door that was left open by Big John. Big John left the back door open. Plus, it's his house. He knows it. Um, so to me, he's already in the house. He kills uh, Karen. Now, what happens after that? I don't know. That's going to be in Halloween ends. Whether he is able to escape the house before the, um, the cops and everybody start to go in there, I don't know. Whether he gets captured again and put in the jail, who knows? I, we don't know. But as of right now, how he got into that house, he got in there because he already knew. Like he or he, yeah, he creeps, he kills, he goes home. Yeah. And that's what he did. He creeped, he killed, he went home. So, um, yeah, people act like he was miles on the road. He literally was on the street over. Like, they literally walked the whole length with um, uh, Michael uh, and Karen. So, the ending, I didn't expect. Now, full disclosure, if everybody knows, there's going to be extra footage in the Blu-ray where um david gordon green apparently confirmed it where the ending is gonna it originally had michael calling karen on the phone and um uh it's rain and michael picks up like the original movie uh 78 movie and you just hear michael breathing and laurie knows something's wrong and she's like i'm coming to get you michael and um i'm coming to find you and i'm i'm, I'm coming to get yours or whatever and then uh michael uh is just breathing on the phone and then you just see the last shot of laurie walking out of the hospital with the knife and then that's how the movie ends i think this, the shot was in the trailer but they took it out because they thought it was like it was too many a little too much i didn't mind it but you know um people act like he was on the road he walked home and came through the back front porch was full of people yeah and pulled a gotcha on her exactly yeah he pulled a gotcha on her uh that's when she walks out of the hospital with the knife yeah that's the scene in the um in the trailer with Lori with the knife. That scene was in the original ending at the last second. I mean, I'm talking last second. 
they they cut that footage out. Um, they just maybe thought it was just one too many callbacks, but um, so yeah, there's a back door, which is the same back door that Michael got in to kill Judith. The same exact thing happened, and there's not a lot of cops on scene at that scene. There's just a, some paramedics, and the lights are going, but you hear some sirens going because they're making their way there, but they're not there yet. So by the time Michael kills Judith, uh, kills Judith, kills Karen, you know, he could, he could have bounced before the cops even got there. Um, and I'm not really worried about a couple of paramedics with Michael. <laughs> I mean, uh, he's taking down a whole fire department outside of the house uh, of Lori's house. So I'm not really worried about, you know, that, but to me, he killed the Haddonfield, uh, the Haddonfield crew, Haddonfield wrecking crew, got back to his house, snuck in, and then uh, Karen. Now, I think that message with Karen was the same with Officer Pete. And I think it is. Don't, and it's going to be the same message to what's his name that he got uh, Hawkins. He got in 78. Like, I think the message is going to be and has been do not get caught up in trying to explain or trying to figure out what Michael is about. Yeah. Stop trying to explain it. Stop trying to understand it. You just got to kill it no matter what you do. And that, I think, is the message of Halloween Kills and Halloween 20. Stop trying to figure him out. Just kill him. Just kill him. Because every person who has stopped to try and figure out or has compassion or has tried to figure out, oh, I wonder what child Michael, because that's what Karen was doing, was looking up in the window going, I wonder what that kid is like. It's a child. I wonder what he was thinking. She goes up, does it. First of all, she doesn't believe he's real. She does believe he's real, but she kind of, it's like she doesn't, but she wants to understand. She goes up and tries to look through the window and, and try to understand how exactly, what is going through Michael's mind when he looks out this window. Well, from her perspective, I think it's probably also her trying to understand this person that her mom was obsessed with, who, who built her life around defending herself from, who was sort of all consumed. It's like you want to understand what, what entity would inspire that that kind of obsession, I guess. Yeah. To me, and people are asking, um, like Leanne and Matt are saying, like, my question is why she saw what she saw. Because to me, I don't think she actually saw kid Michael in the window. I think that was a suggestive, like that was David Gordon Green sort of trying to get through to the audience that this is Karen taking a break from Allison, walking out to the to the street, looking up and going, Why is he like this? Like what, why is this, why is this six-year-old kid or whatever? Why would a six-year-old kid, or how old was he when he killed his sister? Why is a, a kid, why would a kid kill his sister? Why, why would he do that? Like what was going through this kid's mind? Like, like what, I don't, I don't understand. Like I, I don't understand why. Well, narratively speaking too, it brings us back to what kicked off this whole franchise in the first yes. place, the start of the first film is, Which is Judith's going death. up yep into Judith's bedroom mm -hmm. you know and and where it all first happened yeah it's it it's it's she makes the same mistake as officer Pete she makes the same mistake as Hawkins did when Hawkins felt bad and tried to stop Loomis uh same mistake as uh Sartain uh Sartain was trying to understand I think the, the, the common theme is stop trying to understand this thing and just kill it for the love of God. Don't hesitate. Just kill it. Um, and um, I, I think she didn't have a vision of Michael up there. She just, she, and, and from her perspective, Karen thought he was dead. Karen was like, he's gone. Like, like there's literally a town of people <laughs> around him or there's like a big gang around him. She, he, he got beat up. He stabbed him. I stabbed him in the back. I didn't believe him in the first place. I led him into a trap. I said, gotcha for the second time. He's done. Like she was like, oh, in her head, he's done. So, but she got, she, it's over. She got caught sleeping again because she was like, what? I don't, I'm, so she, what, that's the thing. What, what, what went through this kid's, what is, I don't, how, I don't understand. Why can this, why can the person like this do this? Walks up the steps, looks out the window, trying to understand exactly like Officer Pete. And even like Luma's in the original, trying, looked outside this window, not looking past the wall, outside the wall, just trying to figure out exactly what is going through the mind of Michael. And while she got caught, while she was sitting there wondering, she got caught sleeping. Just when you think he's dead or when he's gone or when you think he's not real, she got caught. 
just like Officer Pete did and like everybody else did. You can't get caught. But you got to just kill the fucking thing. I think, again, trying to process that where it all started was with a six-year-old child stabbing his sister. And what has it ended in so far? Mm-hmm. You know, so the deaths of so many people, the the mob that happened mid-film, the death of an innocent life. Six. All of those things. It's like she's trying to reconcile how this could have all started from this one event. Yeah, which is exactly how this... This is how this franchise and this whole everything, this whole entire, this whole movie and this franchise started from that very thing. It was the first scene we saw in the original movie. And it's the very thing that got people in like interested in this movie. We forget. We all watch that original scene of, of the POV shot going through the Myers house and then killing Judith and then walking out. It's like Michael. And all of a sudden they take the mask off and it's like, Doomed. we all just think it's like oh it's just like another day oh it's like another scene it doesn't shock us anymore back then those scenes they were usually done by men when you had to reveal who the killer was it was a dude and it was a it was a grown man and you're thinking at this point back in 78 that this is a grown man stalking and creeping on a you know a what 17 year old 16 year old girl whatever babysitter babysitter murder usually done by adult men and then when that reveal the POV shot when it's a kid in a clown costume, a six year old child. You're like, what? Everybody back in 78 was like freaking out, like, whoa. And they revealed who it was already. You didn't usually do that until the very end of the movie. And it usually was an adult. That reveal was like mind boggling. It was like, what in God's name is happening here? And then the whole creepy thing is, is that same kid grows up and then comes back that's what the whole idea was that's what the intrigue was how could a how could a why how could a kid that young with his sister do that like what that's scary and it, it freaked people out and early on in the movie already it set the trend early in the movie and that's exactly what this movie got back to was people getting caught thinking of wow he killed us like what, what what goes through the mind of a killer like that get caught sleeping he gonna get you boogeyman gonna get you Whereas everybody else, Loomis, Lori, Allison, just fucking kill that some bitch. Just kill it, kill it now. Um, in walk sleepaway camp, yeah. Because the, you know we we could talk about this all week, and now we finally have a you know a talk devoted to it. Let let us talk out some of the issues that you know the diehard fans have. Let's yeah. Talk about some of the issues that folks in the the comments are raising because I think this is why. This film is so divisive or why some you know even halloween fans like kind of struggle you know with with loving it fully yeah let's talk about that real quick yeah let's so in general that was a boy too <laughs> yeah technically and see wait camp yeah i'm gonna go get myself a, dr- a, a quick drink I will grab it. oh thank you keep the keep the chat going the, uh the um I can I get a blue, a blue, a blue, uh, blue drink, a blue drink in, in the side corner, the door corner. I want to know everybody right now who liked this movie, who didn't. And if you didn't like it, if you re, I mean, if you, if you had some issues with it, I'm not asking if you have issues with it. I mean, because we could go through all the issues of the other movies. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, cheer yourself a drink. We can go through the issues of all the Halloween movies, even the original to an extent. Even though it's a, I think it's a masterpiece. If you don't like this movie, why? And, and again, if you don't like this movie and you don't like any of the Halloween movies or any slasher movies in general, that's I can accept that. That's fine. But if you don't like this movie because you think it's unbelievable, or I've heard some people say, "Oh, it's because," I've heard some people criticize it and say. Oh, it's 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 a superhero movie, or oh, it's a little bit too far fetched. Oh, it's too heavy handed with the the, the dialogue. The dialogue's cringy. But then they like movies like Halloween too, and how and I love Halloween four. So Halloween four is good too. But even that has some parts. Halloween four, Halloween five, Halloween six. I mean, do we really have to go through a laundry list of Halloween movies that have these very same issues that are worse? And then you're going to criticize Halloween twenty eighteen and Halloween Kills. To me. You have nostalgia glasses on and your bias is sticking out. Is that a gun or your bias is sticking out of your pocket? Like, what are, what are, what are your pants? What is that? Like, seriously, just take a step back. I mean, if you want to sit here and say, I enjoy Halloween 28, I enjoy Halloween 5 and 6 and whatever those movies. 
H2O more because I grew up with those movies and I remember them being a brother sister thing. And so it's more nostalgia than anything, but I know these new movies are, they're better. They are, but there's something about those old movies that, that just, it's, it's my childhood. Totally get it. Yeah. I want someone to totally get it. The production value, you know, the, the, the skill that's gone into crafting these films. Yes. They are superior to the other films of the franchise. Uh, but you know, again, nostalgia. I like them for this reason, A, B, and C. I'm fine with that because that still acknowledges that these films, I think, are doing something you know more than they, than the franchise did. Yeah. But not everyone's willing to admit that. No, it's it's the people like it's honestly the people that it, it boggles my mind. It's the same. Like, I don't I, I don't know you know people like this, but there's. There could be people out there right now who go, you know, um, these new Marvel superhero movies are great, but the original Superman can't beat that. Or like the Batman show back in the day, Adam West. That's that's my Batman. That's better than any bat. It's like I'm I'm going to throw you off about. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's what that's what Halloween fans sound like nowadays. That's what you sound like. You sound like that because you're going to sit there and criticize. The, like this, these two movies and this movie, but then you're going to give it. It's like this is a little unbelievable, but a cult, a, a cult of thorn. Yeah, I believe it. It was pretty good. Yeah, I'll allow it. Or what about on Halloween too? He gets shot multiple times. He gets shot in the eyes, both of his eyes, straight through his eyes, through his brain. Still walking around swinging, gets blown up. Gets burnt alive, burned alive, and people say like, "Okay, all right, if you end it there, that's fine." Bullshit! You can't end it there because he got literally shot in both eyes from Lori, who had, by the way, dead shot eyes. Dead shot, by the way. Never fired a gun before in her entire life. Lori Strode fires, bang, bang, right through the eyes. Lucky, lucky shot. Oh, that. Oh, I'll allow it. But then he still lives, and then he gets blown up. Then he gets, he's still alive. He's still alive. And then it's like he gets burned. And then he's still walking. And then he finally collapses. But but then after that, there's still Halloween 4, Halloween 5, Halloween 6, where people just go, yeah, I'll allow it. Ugh. I think Elizabeth makes a good point. I think that a lot of people on the chat and who have showed up in the chat would probably agree. She said, I can simultaneously enjoy it and take issue with some of the choices. I have no problem, that, no that, problem that's what, with thinking both things and I, and I think yeah. that's that's probably how I walked away from the film as well there are definitely aspects I liked there are aspects that I didn't I was one of the person people that found the dialogue at times to be a little too cringy but honestly yeah. on a rewatch I, I, I'm not seeing it as much and maybe because I'm sort of trying to sort of understand and, and kind of immerse myself in the film and the sense of what mm -hmm. you know, the folks might be going through so I didn't feel like it struck me as much as it struck me in the theater but I think majority of people in this chat and again who showed up for this chat would agree that this is this is a quality film and you can disagree with certain choices or take issue with them but you can still appreciate what the film did and what it's trying to do yeah. especially as it's trying to sort of uh i don't want to say reawaken because you know the, the halloween franchise Reign is reignite fun, yeah kind reignite of getting people re-excited about it and I, I think that's so much of what these films try to do and I, I said this in previous talks, and I'll say it again. I, I think it's a love letter to the fans. Yeah. And it's supposed to be fun, and it's supposed to get you reminiscent and thinking about, you know, what makes these films great, even the ones that are lesser so. So, yeah, I, it's a long way of saying, like, you're spot on, Elizabeth. I'm there with you. Yeah, I again, like, we, I mean, Elizabeth, we can sit here. I mean, after that movie, we sat there, and, and I – we talked about it. I gave you my negative thoughts on it, but I, it's like, I'm not like I can do like, I'm going to sit here and do that with like movies like, like moonlight and like um, some of the, of the, you know, uh, parasite and some of the Academy award winning, just, just absolute, just, you know, little women. And um, what's the other, uh, Oh, lady bird. Like movies, like I can go through and say, okay, you know, and I, we look at every movie like that as far as like pacing and tone and all that sort of stuff. But these are popcorn movies. They are fun movies. 
And are there flaws with Marvel movies? Yeah. Are there flaws with DC movies? Yeah. I mean, uh, if you heard me go out, I love, I like, I, I like Zack Snyder, but my God, his movie, the slow motion, pick it up. Um, yeah, and the chance, just pick it up a little, pick the pace up a little bit. Well, and to Leanne's point, like, uh, and this is what Leanne said, I'll never get why it has to be believable. How much has Jason been? Thank here? you. And, and that with her as well. I mean, again, willing suspension of disbelief. You're putting yourself into the narrative and imagining what it would be like. And I certainly think 2018 and Halloween Kills do that really effectively yeah you know more more effectively than some others in the franchise yeah. and then, and i'll still say i enjoyed those ones in the franchise but i still think these newer ones are more effective in it you definitely know, it feels like we're, we're it feels like we're making very small nitpicks at these newer films yet we go in yep. with, with kind of blinders on when we go into the old old films and say oh they have no flaws or I can see past those. Flaws. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's really mind boggling. That's what I think. And, and there's, there's times you should see, I turn the camera off and the stream's done. And then I'm sitting there and you guys probably know I'm sitting here, you know, all day, every, all day, every day, sometimes just going to, we want around, get some a drink or something, something to eat. I'm just like, these fucking people complaining about this movie. And she's like, all right, just, all right, just don't get so worked up about it. I'm like, but I have to, because if I don't, then I won't rant about it. And if I won't rant about it, then other people won't understand. I don't get it. I don't understand it. It's pissing me off. Nostalgia. Bl- Thank you. Thank you. I, this is, you guys are awesome. This is the best group of people ever in the world of people. You guys are awesome. All of you, because this is, I'm not like, I'm not asking you all to agree with me and say this movie is so much fun it's so great whatever and i don't even know i don't even say it's great it's great in the sense of fun but i'm, I'm just all i'm doing is just we're, all we're talking about is just essentially this movie just it's a horror movie it's a slasher movie it's a slasher horror movie drama together in a movie it takes it a step up a notch from halloween 2018 but it's god damn it so much epic stuff it's so much fun and if you, again if you want to sit there and say i don't like this movie but also, I don't really like any of the Halloween movies. Well, it makes sense. You're a snob. I mean, but seriously, no, no, no. I'm, ki- I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It was a joke. Mm-hmm. It's not your cup of tea. You don't like those movies? That's fine. I like every single movie. I every, well, not every movie, a lot of movies. But if you're gonna sit there and say I enjoy Halloween Five and I like Halloween Five and Halloween Six for all of its little things, and there's so many people on. If you're Matt, you know Killer Flicks. If you're uh, in the Killer Flicks uh, Facebook group, you've seen it. If you're in uh, other groups, you've seen it. Halloween fan groups, you've seen people will just say they, they'll, they'll anything new, they'll just rip apart as if it's a it's supposed to be like this masterpiece. I mean, I, I d- cringy dialogue. I've seen people say, "Oh, this movie was so, it was pretty bad." What's so bad about it? Well, oh, there's some really uh, cringy dialogue lines. I'm like. Okay, a couple of lines, a couple of cringy dialogue lines. Is that it? Yeah, well, he's pretty unbelievable. Well, maybe on that point, it's, it, it actually transitions well into the point that Michael brought up. I think a lot of people kind of took issue with, you know, Michael's age and what he was able to accomplish. And I, I do think that that was a big point raised by a lot of people. Like, come on, what's, what's Michael? Like, mid-60s? Like... You're, you're telling me this man has this much power. So, yeah, p- pick up that one. Okay. Um, where is it? Of all the critiques I've seen on the film in relation to its realism or lack thereof, I've seen so few talk about how Michael is pushing like 65 in his film. Most oh, bit- interesting. That, I feel like that's what we what we heard a lot about. Maybe that was, was Joe and Ed who, who were sort of thinking. I've, it, you know what's know funny? It's funny that you say that because I've seen, pe- I've seen more people critique these two movies but not how michael is powerful this this is going to play this is going to be an interesting conversation and and michael and michael johnson leanne matt elizabeth katie Wu, everybody missy cousin everybody who listen to this you can all have your hot take on this one give me your honest opinion okay get ready get your key get get your keyboards out get your phone out I've seen more people 
critique these past two movies, Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills, because Laurie Strode, a.k.a. also known as played by Jamie Lee Curtis, at the age that she is, and being a grandma at her age, is a little unbelievable, far-fetched to do what she can do. But surprisingly, Michael, I have not, Michael, Michael, I have not heard as much criticism. I have heard this criticism. I've read it, but it has not been as apparent where people criticize the movies for Michael having the power that he has or the, um, this, uh, just the strength or whatever that he has at, in his 60s or however old he is in this movie, uh, these two movies, because he's the same age in both, same night. There's been more criticism on Laurie Stroh than there has been Jamie Lee Curtis. I'm sorry, then Michael Myers and um, uh, the character of Michael Myers. Now, I'll let you all give me your hot take. You can give me your reasons as if to why you believe that's possible. Why people want are so quick, so quick to judge and critique and chastise these movies for having a powerful Laurie Strode, aka powerful grandma, aka ah oh, blah 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 blah. But I've heard very little from the same people about Michael's abilities at his age. Yeah, I feel like I've heard a lot about Michael. I have I I've heard more bashing on Laurie Strode as, as the well, that I as the grandma. Unbelievable grandma, older grandma. She's little, well, she's a super. She's she's like the Terminator. What is her name from Terminator? Um, um, oh, yeah, blank on it, but yeah, essentially, oh, it's that character from the Terminator. And it's like, but they, yeah, it was also bad, but they don't mention that they, they, they don't mention Michael at his age. I've heard people who are like just casual fans of Halloween, I've heard them. Who were like, you know, kind of like, oh, I like those movies. I've heard them criticize. How old was Michael Nello? 60 something years old? But the hardcore Halloween fans, no. It's the most of the criticism is, well, what is Lori Strode like? What is she like a grandma? She learns how to shoot now and everything. Oh, she's like a uh, powerful. Uh, only the grandma can overpower Michael. Now, you guys can give me your hot take. As th- thank you, Linda Hamilton. Thank you, man. Thank you. You can give me your hot take on why you think that is. I have an idea. We have an idea of why. Um, but um, that's been most of the criticism, Michael. That. Not so much that Michael... Now, granted, is it impossible that Michael could be at his age and do what he does? And yeah, it, it, it's 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 hard. It, it's a little out there, but I don't know. I, I, honestly, there's, a, there's been serial killers going up until how old? I mean, I don't know. I mean, another thing, too, it's like it's his... I think they're going to cap it off with this last movie, and they're going to redo a, another soft reboot. So I'm not really worried about the age thing. I mean, uh, to me, it's not completely... Um, there's people Michael's age and older who run triathlons. So, uh, you know, whatever. Well, different times that I've, I've been at the range, I've seen women twice my age in there just tearing up targets. So Yeah, yeah. It's not unbelievable to me at all. And I mean, if we think about some of you know, the, so we you. think about the final girl, quote unquote, which which has you know some of its problems, right? This is the final woman, how we're imagining it now in 2021. You know? Yeah, which I think is is awesome. I mean, keep yeah. doing it. Uh, love the dedication to recreation of 19 locations and looking to feel the original. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, Really like how Warren is masking him too. You know he's been through something. <laughs> uh, I, I enjoyed it. This Halloween digs a lot deeper than many of the previous films. I agree. We agree. With a carefully plotted level of exploration into trauma and how people react to situations. Yeah. Nailed it, Missy. Nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it. That's exactly what we've been saying. I'm so glad you said that. There's so much more to chew on with these two movies. Tapping into it with, Little bit. with with Lori's you know alcohol consumption in that film and the way that she sort of you know was calm, cool, and collected on the outside, but clearly was dealing with you know deeper seated trauma. Yep. But it, it for whatever reason, maybe because of the the historical moment we were in, it wasn't realized to the effect yep. that it was in in these two films, where I think we're much more cognizant 
of, of mental health. Yeah. I think with the research, with the, with the resurgence of like get out and, um, us and hereditary, I think a 24 has played a big part in that there's, there has been, there has been a revelation with filmmakers and production companies that you don't just have to make horror movies that are hack and slash and, and just, are just nothingness. Yeah, sure. They could be fun and have nothing going on, but it's, they are, that's what, they're movies that can have depth to them. There's more to chew on. They make a lasting impact. They're saying something. And that's when movies are, they're better in that respect. There's a theme there. There's a subtext. There's a uh, narrative. Um, and that's one of the biggest criticisms of horror movies that they don't really, they usually don't have that, especially in the eighties, even though they have some classics, let's, gonna, let's not get it twisted. They do nineties too. But lately because of, again, hereditary, get out us a, a plus, plus a plethora of other ones. There has been a sort of resurgence of, oh, yeah, we can do these movies, have fun with them, and also say something as well. And it's it's way better that way, way better that way. I mean, it's, there's so much more to them, and the rewatchability of them is, is, is it's so much it's so much better and realistic. That this is exactly, this is exactly what we've been talking about for forever. Is how how much deeper these last two have been um and carefully plot it level of exploration the trauma and how that's yeah oh. the, the trauma aspect especially perfect someone would be handling this even yeah even years after i thought was so realistic yeah so much more relatable and just just relatable just like just scary and just a lot of depth to it jimmy goes to be a bad until the day she dies it was just jealous so yeah and that's another thing too. I've seen uh, there's a lot. I won't get into it because that's another topic for another day. There's a lot of ang I've seen a lot of people just angry, naturally angry towards Laurie Strode, not because of Laurie Strode, but just because of Jamie Lee Curtis. I, I, I just like they're just ah Jamie Lee Curtis. Now there's a couple of reasons we can probably figure out why, but it just comes out of nowhere, and you just don't see that with a lot of actors who are the main character, or even like Nev. Cam even you're starting to see it now with Nev Campbell before Nev. Nev Campbell, it was like Sydney Prescott's awesome. Sydney, yeah, she's awesome. She's she's the best final character. We say final character because it's final girls. It's like they're not twelve. It's weird. It's weird. I don't know. We never got the final girl thing. It just was always weird. Um, uh, but I've seen recently with Scream Five coming out. As much as we love Scream, uh, the Scream franchise and Sydney Prescott, there have been some Scream fans and horror fans that have been sort of hooting and hollering for. Nev, like saying like Sydney Prescott's got to go in this one. I'm like, why? No, I don't get that. Like, Thank you. See, she's gonna get pissed. We want, we want the villain to live on. But I'm telling you, the heroine, the hero of the story, eventually to die. Like, it, we're tired of that. We get, but we never yeah. tire of the killer who's just I know. slashing people to death. I know, and they never people listen. We are hardcore fans of these franchises. We are, as much as you all are, and everybody else is. You like, we are attached to these characters too. We also know that these are like Michael, Jason, Freddy, Chucky, you know, Ghostface. These are like the new Dracula, the new Mummy, the new Frankenstein. You can take these characters and sort of come up with new ideas based on the original concept of the character. You don't have to continue the same sort of story. So every saga dealing with a new whereas Laurie Strode or Mike Smith or Tommy, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can create these different stories based on it. And just because like you are attached to the main protagonist, main antagonist, Michael Myers, doesn't mean that you, you, you cheer for them to like overcome and kill everyone, including the main protagonist. That's not how the, when this movie first came out, everybody was cheering for Laurie Strode. Like, come on, Lori, get out of there. You know, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people were. And now it's like, and it's the same thing with Sydney Prescott. It's like, Sydney, come on, Sydney. Yeah, I love Sydney. But it's like, the wild, so people just get, oh, yeah, Sydney Scott, dog. It's just like, what the, where is this anger? Why, where is this coming from, this anger, Bill Burr? Yeah, seriously, where do you, what are you angry about, sir? Uh, people fail to remember age is something that applies to a man. This isn't a man. It's pure evil in the form of human being. If you're going to complain about his age now, but completely fine with how he, how well, he puts his sister only six years old. I agree. Also, I mean, there, uh, there's disorders out there, and we're uh, Justin from uh, the um, the Sun uh, podcast. Uh, I'm drawing him, but Justin, you know, Justin. Um, we were talking, and he said about how some people think that Michael has that, you know disorder, disease, whatever, where essentially he doesn't feel pain. Now, 
you could actually make that case. Now, as long as they maybe bring it up as far as like a like a throwaway line, like maybe he has A, B, and C, I'd be fine with it because it would explain why it's like he's not superhuman, but he actually like, oh man, like it explains why he doesn't feel pain to an extent. That would sort of make sense, but you don't have to explain it on screen. You could throw it out there as a possibility, but it's not impossible to think about. think that Michael is a man but is the embodiment of evil and, and that he does things that aren't possible that's part of what makes him frightening and scary we don't yeah. have to try and explain it away yeah we can just take that as a part of the character and I think that's what these filmmakers have sort of tried to revive you know later films whether it was um I always forget it but the thorn trilogy, the thorn trilogy yeah thorn trilogy and when you think about you know, um, uh, Rob Zombie and, and sort of trying to explain it. Like, we don't we don't need to know why Michael is what he is or why no. he acts the way he does or where these sort of almost superhuman-like powers, if you want to call it that, or ways of being come from. It doesn't matter. We don't we don't need that backstory. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can try to explain. Look at Katie's, Katie's uh, line. <laughs> that's great. You can – that's what I like – even Loomis tried to explain what exactly was going on in 78. I mean, it's okay for these characters to talk about it and try to figure it out and try to process it. I'm okay with that. They don't know. They're just trying to understand and trying to break it down, trying to give some narrative to it to themselves. I mean, Christ, we, I try to give narrative to the, and try to under, understanding and reasoning to these people who don't like these two new movies. I'm sitting there going like, I don't understand this evil. These people don't like these movies. Michael evil like I don't get it I sit there amongst myself there's no camera involved people watch these movies going like oh well this is ridiculous why would they talk about Michael like this but then the, again Paul Rudd in Halloween 6 the power of the ruin stopped him I'll allow it what what uh or cookie woman um but yeah uh let's see why uh the Michael Johnson why the laureate too much laying sexism was still in harm I didn't want to bring it up and people, and there's a lot, there's a lot of really, really fragile dudes out there who are going to get really worked up about this fragile, fragile, fragile fans. fans. Cause you could be a friend. Cause there are, I won't go lie. This is not, there are some women horror fans out there, female horror fans out there who try to go. It's like, they try to overcompensate. It's like, I'm badass. I'm hardcore. I like tits. Yeah. Kill the Yeah. Fucking badass. I like naked chicks and slasher. I don't like slasher. It's like, okay. Sensibilities as a woman aren't bothered by We get see I've seen it. I Matt, Killer Flicks, you're in Killer Flicks. You've seen it. There's a couple in there who are just like, I like when girls get it's just tits. It's just a girl walking around. People are so sensitive these days. I like a good no brain slasher. You know, you can like that, but it's like they're trying to be too cool and overcompensate and to look cool in front of the guys. Yeah, I'm one of the guys. I can get along with the hack and slash and tits all over. Yeah. It's like, okay. All right. You're obviously not. Re it's like you're not recognizing still the problematic issues there. But and that's what I think is necessary is you can appreciate so many of these films for the scare that they give you and for the nostalgia of the historical period in which they were made yep. while still recognizing the flaws having to do with race, class, gender, uh, and I'm forgetting one of the isms, race, class, gender, Sec class, um, yeah, sexuality, age, like the, there's, there's lots that apply and, and you can still, I mean, and, and that's my kind of personal opinion about film in general is that we can look back on many of these films that are problematic. We can appreciate them for the nostalgia. We can appreciate them for the moment they were made, but still recognize the ways in which they were wrong or, yeah. or you know, inappropriate by today's standards um, and, and call out those critiques. And I, I think that that's okay as a movie watcher and as a movie goer. Yeah. We, I, you're not a fan of the Friday the 13th movies. I'm not a huge fan of the Friday the 13th movies either. When I do that ranking video, I which- what the first one did. Yeah, I, I, yeah I we appreciate, yeah, exactly. The, the villain. Yeah. But the but in general they're not great movies. I mean, it has a lot of potential there. But I do appreciate that they added in like some some in, like 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, the character in the wheelchair. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some definitely flashes of good stuff in Friday the 13th movies, and you could really do something with it if they're given the chance. Same thing with the Freddy movies, you know. But I, I like Freddy more than Jason and Nightmare more than the Night Friday movies. But long story short, there are some problems with the Friday the 13th movies. Now, as problematic as they are, I can still watch Friday the 13th Part 4 and appreciate some of the things and kind of go, <laughs> Oh, they're, you know, not the, okay. You know, it, but it's like, it's a, it's a product of its time and kind of go like, okay, you know, we, we didn't bring our suits <laughs> or like the, you know, the, you know, this is a good song, <laughs> you know, and he dances and stuff. And I love that shit. And we all love that shit, but, and, but I, I can also, and I can appreciate the, the, the nudity. Do I think it's a little, I mean, look, I'm fine with in the newer movies. They want to throw some male nudity in, in there for the, you know, male nudity in there for some people who like that make it fair i don't know or just have no nudity whatever the fuck you want to do whatever i get it i'm not gonna sit there and criticize them but i also can do that at the same time recognize its flaws and that's what we're doing right here is just recognizing some of the flaws recognizing that some of this stuff is like you can still like these movies the new ones and recognize its flaws and you can still like the older ones and recognize its flaws, but it's almost like people don't want to recognize that these other movies are a not great, b not like they're just not as good as the newer ones. They just they are just looking for anything to bash the new ones. Yeah, and it's like I think the new ones get a lot more right than they get wrong, and especially in comparison to the old, where I think it's you know the reverse. Uh, yeah, exactly. Zachary Connor, Rob Zombie, to Hooper aesthetic worship, was born to remake Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but we got home. Yeah, Rob Zombie should have done Texas Chainsaw Massacre without a doubt. Boy, without a doubt. I, I still, I, I, as much as I'm not a huge fan of Rob Zombie's movies, when they hot when they brought him in, Dimension Films got you know brought him in to do um, Halloween one and two and whatever. When they brought him in to do the Halloween franchise, do the reboot, I remember watching it going like. Rob Zombie? Like, that didn't make any sense to me. And to this day, like, I'll have fun with those movies and I'll, I'll sort of like certain parts and bash certain parts, but I insisted this day, we've talked about this, I always felt like he wasn't the right director to reboot the franchise. It didn't make any sense to me. It was like, Michael is usually, slow, you know, suspense, stalker, creepy-ish kind of deal. Like, I feel like David Fincher could do it well, or I don't know he's a high-profile director, but like somebody who could really do suspense well. Slow burn, um, might have to up the pace a little bit, but something scary, score, cinematography, that kind of deal. Rob Zombie is good at that, as, like you said, the aesthetic, the loud grindhouse kind of deal. So, Texas Chainsaw Massacre could have been perfect. Um, and the Tobe Hooper aesthetic, exactly. I and mean, he could have nailed Texas Chainsaw Massacre, absolutely. And I would have actually bought into that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I, but I, I never felt like Rob Zombie was the right director to reboot the Halloween franchise. And I don't even know if he thought he was the right director. He loved the original Halloween, but I guarantee he probably was like, oh, I like Halloween, I'll do it because I'm a fan, but are you sure you want to hire me? Are you sure you want to do that? But, I mean, you know, you're know, you not going to ignore a paycheck. Um, great observation, Michael. Yeah, we 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 try to make it a point to not bring certain things up and sort of like, we'll talk about them, but we don't want to sit there and preach. And if people observe them, they do. But like, we want to hit you over the head with some of this stuff. We've observed this on our own. And and like the fact that you nailed it on the head like that, just like, it really is. I, I mean, like you said, I don't, we don't understand why these protagonists get, want to get booted out so fast. And how even like people will cheer for like, or like, when their Michael Myers or Jason or Freddie gets beat up or or attacked or they're just like no don't do it like I'm upset like they get upset like I I I think in some sort of way it's like it's almost like these characters were sort of like a way to identify with something that maybe some childhood trauma that you identify with your fear you kind of attach to yourself to it and um you know they, so it's like it's it's close to you like that so it's almost like. You know, it's the same reason why people, older generations are like, you know, Dracula. Like, oh, they love Dracula because of, oh, they become attached to it. These are, are the new universal plastic monsters to us. But you have to be able to sit there and go, you can destroy these monsters 
and then come up with a new saga. You don't have to sit there and kill off the protagonist, the main protagonist. If anyone's going to kill Dracula, it's going to be Van Helsing. If anyone's going to kill Michael Myers, it's going to be Dr. Loomis or Laurie Strode. It's not going to be Joe Bob from down the street. And to be honest with you, I really don't. I love, I like Allison. You like Allison. We all like Allison. We don't hope that I really don't want to see it to be Allison because to me, it, it, it just, it won't feel right. I know Allison went, Allison lost her mom, lost her dad, and may even lose her grandma in the process. But it needs to be the person who started it from the, be from the beginning. It needs to be that person, regardless of who you are. If you do a sequel to Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, it needs to be Jesse. doesn't matter what kind of sex you are. It, that protagonist needs to do it. If you, if it, at the end of Nightmare 2, if it was what it was, ended up being, but if Jesse's girlfriend defeats Freddy, which kind of does, but it's like a dream sequence, it doesn't feel like, it just feels kind of like empty. Kind of like, like, just like, uh, really? That just happened? So it, it needs to be Laurie Strode. And you need to close this saga off. And then you have to do a soft reboot. And then you got to start it again. And then make, make Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. You make these franchises. Each individual saga, you can have a saga within a saga. It's basically an anthology series based like the Universal Classic Monsters. And just keep doing Same thing with Scream. Just keep, hey, keep it fresh, man. Or else it's going to get stale. And people are going to look at these classic monsters like they did Universal Monsters. They eventually wore out. And I don't want to see that happen to these people, um, these characters. That there was a touches on another criticism um, that people had about 2018 and, and kind of the, where you kick off or the reboot in, in the other franchise. I remember when 20 teams coming out, people were going crazy about Laurie and Michael's relationship to each other. Crazy as in like they were pissed off because they weren't still related or crazy because they uh, were excited. Like were they pro or con that? Um, let me know about that. I mean, I was I was jumping for joy. Yes. Again, I was thinking about, you know, uh, Carpenter's original intent before he, <laughs> uh, you know, pushed out to, which doesn't really sound like it was as much, not, not nearly as much of a labor of love as, as the 78 film. So, you know, when they kind of called that out immediately in, in 2018 and with the humor that it that they did, you know, with Allison telling her friends like, oh, that's just a story, you know, people made up. It was like, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't want there to be, I, you know, I, I like my Michael, if I could say that, to, to not have any sort of motive or reason to be going after Lori Strode and her friends. Mm -hmm. I don't want there to be like, oh, because he knew, you know, they were, there was sister and brother. That just, to, to, to me, detracts from what makes Michael frightening. Mm -hmm. The original, and we, we all know this, the original version of Michael uh, from John Carpenter's, like the, from the get go, it was the whole scary part of Michael was a, that it, a kid did it to his sister and then he escaped. And then it was just a guy who picked up a mask and just did it like that. That, that was the scariest part. That was the boogeyman. It could be any, anybody. And it could be anybody in a the theater, anybody, uh, anybody in, in, in a neighborhood, a suburban neighborhood. You didn't have to have a bad family. You didn't have to, like, you just didn't know. It was a blank slate, white mask, jumpsuit. Like, you just was like, oh, wow. Dog, cat. Dog, cat, anybody. And it's like, it doesn't doesn't speak, doesn't holler, doesn't, you know, it's not like Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, it's not like Jason where it's just like, you know, like, oh, I'm angry. Or Freddy where it's like, I'm uh, creepy, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, I don't deal. But it's not like those sort of angry, rev I'm going to get revenge because I was left to die as a child. And I'm going to go, this was just somebody who just one day just picked up, he just one day just snapped or it, nobody, what, what? And that's what's so intriguing about it. And then after Halloween two, John Carpenter in multiple interviews said is he's like, uh, yeah. and he didn't even like Halloween two. And he even said in later interviews, he was like, I, I, I just, I had a six pack of beer and I didn't know what to write. So, and there's been two, stories one has been that john carpenter wrote the sibling twist because he couldn't come up with anything there's also i read another story where it wasn't john carpenter it was essentially the uh the studio uh like the producers that pushed john carpenter to say well how about this twist you know and then john carpenter was like all right fine i don't know which story it was i, I saw two articles about it either way 
it was thrown in there because they didn't have much to go with in Halloween 2. They really didn't have anything. They had no plot, no nothing. They really had anything to go with. So it's like, and Halloween 2, people hold on to Halloween 2 like it's some classic. It's not. There's some cool parts to it, but it's not. Halloween 2 is a very flawed film and a very slow, boring movie. So let let it, as, my, as, as Laurie says, let it burn. Let it all burn. Those movies are still there. They're going to be there for the etern- end of time, eternity of time. Halloween 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to Resurrection and Rob Zombie Halloween. They're all going to be there. It's just their interpretation and their view, their uh, their vision. But let's just get this right. Let's get this right while Laurie Strode or Jamie Lee Curtis is still young enough to do it. Let's get it right. Let's do a continuation and no sibling angle. Just get it right from Halloween 1 and just start wait, right where it ended and go from there. And then we can finish this saga and let's do it again. And then just go back from like 1978 or 79 or whatever, whatever year you want to do and get this franchise back on track and do that with every other franchise. They're too good at characters to let it go. So um, the first time I heard, well, again, the first time I heard the dial between the family and Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. Goddamn me, share my bell. <laughs> Bitch, I'm all broken up here. Oh my God. That dialogue. Jesus Christ. I don't get it. I, I, I don't know how you're sitting there as a filmmaker writing a dialogue out like, Bitch, I'm all broken up here. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the stepdad in the wheelchair creeping on the dog. Like, I get it. You're trying to build. And yeah, and that in Halloween, too. That, you know, yeah, talking about full corpses. <laughs> like, Jay does this. That's all about when we watch the movie. Like, like, oh, my God. It's like, what? What are you doing? Like, I get it. You're trying to put, like, a John Wayne Gacy kind of serial killer aesthetic to it realistically but it just changes the whole thing like it's they live in illinois all the southern stuff and everything it just was like what is happening you know take that damn thing off (laughs) yeah And again, I know people that there are people that disagree with that and you know maybe that want more of that origin story or to better understand Michael and that uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm beating a dead horse at this point. Yeah. I, want, but. I I I I can rec I can appreciate it for what it was. If you wanna if you wanna try to dive into a mind of a serial killer, uh, maybe a, a family of a broken home, it makes sense. But it not only do we do that with Halloween one, but the Halloween two, we also went into like a Rob Zombie, uh, not Rob Zombie, a uh, Jason aesthetic with his ghost mom and his mom's a ghost on a horse. And it's like, kill for me, Michael. It's like, what is happening here? What is happening? The first movie was like a serial killer thing. The second movie was like a, like a ghost witch story with like Jason as we already had Jason. You talk about a Jason movie, Jesus Christ. So that's where I just, it boggles my mind. Um, I can appreciate it for what they are, but it's just, I appreciate that they're his vision of what Michael is, what Halloween movies are, but the, these movies and this, this approach is better. Um, very distinctive dialogue. Yeah. And yes, pissed. They aren't really, yeah, I agree. And now I won't go too far down this road. That's because ex- I know we already touched on it a lot. Yes. Leanne, hundred percent. There are people who are just, who were pissed that they got rid of the sibling storyline even though the creator of this franchise was literally like, yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah. I shouldn't have done that. Like I, that was, I was drunk. I, I, I didn't say it was drunk. I had a six pack of beer and I had writer's block and I had to think of something, but he was stoked that they were getting back to the original vision of the, of the franchise and the original story of it. He was, he was stoked for it. They got him on to be executive producer. It's like, you got these people who are like, well, I disagree. Yeah, the, the, the person who created this franchise is sitting there telling you, and they'll say like, oh, well, he's just getting paid because he's executive producer. He's, his, he's going to get paid no matter what. With some of the other sequels, he wasn't, he was a creator. So he got some sort of royalties, but he's not like, he's Halloween two. he got royalties. But like. Well, there's the uh, argument of like, you know, once the artist releases the art into the world, right? Like the, the audience of course. can do with it what they want and, and they're free to interpret it any way. And and I and I'm, I'm all for that. I understand that, but it doesn't mean that every you know different way that it's taken is necessarily good. Yeah. You know. 
Yeah, because the whole idea with Michael is that he wasn't, this wasn't, like, if you want to put your own spin on it, that's fine. But Michael, the, the, the thing that made Michael Michael was it was a blank slate. A kid, the reveal of the kid, the, the clown outfit, and just a blank face in a suburban home. There was no explanation, no, like, it would look like a normal mom and dad coming home in a suburban Haddonfield, Illinois, open it, like, and it was, like, shocking. That's what made it shocking. It was like, what? And it's just the mystery of, like, what is going on up here? Whereas Jason, it was, like, sort of, like, a, you know, a revenge story from a mother standpoint and then a revenge story from the child wasn't actually dead standpoint and that whole deal. Freddie's same deal, psychological horror, that kind of deal. But Michael was, that was, Michael wasn't traumatized in that whole, the whole thing that made Michael Michael was it was a blank slate because the idea was that it could be anybody. Animal. It could be any, yeah, it could be animal, Michael, either. But the idea was that once Loomis looks over the balcony and Michael's gone and then you hear him breathing at all the different spots, that was the idea. The idea was he could be anywhere, not just him. Michael could be sort of, it's the boogeyman. The boogeyman is, is sort of like a vague sort of terminology for just like a stalk. Like this could be a stalker. It's a faceless stalker in a white mask. That's scary. The fact that someone could be lurking in your closet, whether it's Michael or somebody else, that's scary. So get, to get away from that and try to add some sort of like, I get it. You want to get real, but just make another movie about it. Don't just, you know, whatever. I haven't been that horse about it. Yeah. He's a stalker in the original. So if he marked, if he marked Lori, then it can just be a compulsion fixation sort of thing. That's exactly what he did. And they do that in 2018. He, in 78, he looks out the window of the door. It, it's only because Lori's dad said to her, can you drop off the keys to the Myers house? Mm -hmm. Lori's dad didn't do that. She would have never walked up to the Myers house. He would have never saw her. And that move that would have never happened. He saw her outside the window and was like, what? And then he sort of like walked out to the street and sort of like looking at her, just breathing. It's like, ooh. But I swear that's why he kills um, the woman who uh, is afraid of the Myers house. Appears in 2018 showing Judith's grave. Like he recognized her. Yeah, he hasn't, like, that's another thing that makes Michael different. He's, they make like he it's such a cool thing carpenter did he's observant mm -hmm. and he's smart and loomis even says even when he's watching he even when he you don't think he's aware like saying says it in 2018 they were like oh it's like he's barely it's like oh he's aware he's been watching you the whole time like he watches he's a like john carpenter said it in the original commentary there's two different commentaries for halloween uh 78 uh one in the original blu-ray uh and then the other in the second blu-ray but the one where it's just john carpenter talking I think it's him and Deborah, it's him, Deborah Hill, and someone else, and they, Jamie Lee Curtis. And they have like fragments of it put in there. It's on the original version of the Blu ray. Um, Carpenter says it in his commentary. He says, That's the original idea with Michael, is that Michael is a watcher. He watches, he's a, he observes. And it's almost like Lori is the parallel to Michael in like the good sense, good and evil. Like she is also the watcher, which is what she's observant which is why she survives and why she's able to survive. It's why she's able to sort of, you know, she's while her friends are sort of, you know, distracted by boys and whatever. Lori was the one who was sort of observing Michael the whole time going like, who's that guy and what's going on? And he's looking at us from over there. I don't get it. Like, I don't understand. I don't like, I don't like this. She's just observant. Like Michael, Michael saw her walked out, looked at her from there, took out her friends to get out of the way. And then, you know, went after Lori. So, or, you know, he plant actually, she planted a trap for Lori. Maybe that's why they plant. Ooh, it was, made the case. That's why, that's why they're planting traps for uh, Michael in 2018 and in Halloween kills. Cause Michael essentially laid a trap for Lori in the original Halloween. He killed her friends off and then got on the phone, got her to come over anyway. Um, but the point is, is that, um, in 2018, Michael doesn't go after Lori. We talked about this in the movie. He only goes after her when he kills Ray, and then he looks at the door, and Mike and Lori's looking at the at the door like a little window, and she sees Michael. Michael sees her. That's the only time. Before that, his fixation was kind of Allison. He sees Allison at the gate thing with the with the music thing, and he sees um, Allison in the car. Um, and then he starts breathing heavy and stuff. You start hearing him breathing, but he goes after, like, he doesn't, you don't need a motive of family. You don't need it. 
it's not necessary. It makes it less scary. It's like, remember resurrection? He killed off the family, he went home. It's like, so all I got to do is stay out of Michael's way and that's it. Okay. It's not scary. Um, the shape's origin. I was cringing so hard listening to that scene. There's so much cr- Talk about cringy dialogue. Rob Zombie's movies with the cringy dialogue. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. You want to talk about cringeworthy dialogue? Thank you. Yeah. Jesus. Um, the second I heard the word skull, f- yeah. Yes. I, I, you're going to ask, go fuck the shit out of you. Like, what in the hell is it? within a couple minutes immediately in that movie? I'm like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Really? We're already getting into this shit? Like, this is already like Michael, like you said. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, perfect for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's that scene essentially is the scene later on. That scene right there with Michael and his family when he was a kid in Rob Zombie's Halloween is essentially the Texas Chainsaw Massacre scene later on when they're all at the table. <laughs> you know, God damn it, she don't fucking know. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> just stay away from his house. Exactly. Exactly. That's, and to me, even though Michael is scary, as a kid and growing up, like the original was scared, the scariest. And then after that, it was, he was scary, but it's like, okay, so all I have to do is just stay away from his family, just stay out of the way of his family. And then some of the people will say, well, no, he kills people who are not like family. Yeah. Because they're in the way they're they're He's going after the family. That's what he's doing. He's going after whether it's Lori or whether it's Jamie but if you're living in like, I don't know, East Bumblefuck, or if you're living like in a couple towns over and you're not in his way, you don't have to worry about him. You're like, all right, well, I don't worry about Michael. I'm just, you know, we have to worry about Michael Myers. Why? Oh, he's 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 trying to kill his, his niece. Okay. It's his town over. All right. Aren't you scared? No. No. Yeah. Why? He creeps, he kills, and he goes home. He creeps, he, he, he's going after his family. I don't have to worry about it. If we're a town over, I, I, he obviously is not coming anywhere near here. And I tell you what, you tell me when Jamie Lloyd or anybody, any blood relative is coming to this town, and then I'll hit the panic button. But besides that, I don't have to worry about shit. Seriously, it's not scary. Not even scary. Not even scary. Freddy versus Jason. Anybody? Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, so that's. We're gonna wrap this up a little bit. It's getting, but I, that's I'm so the Halloween kills haters. I don't understand. It boggles my mind because the people who criticize Halloween 2018 for it not being violent enough, or being too dramatic, or being too not like oh, there's not enough kills on screen, and da 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 da. da. Um, they, they a lot of the, I've seen a lot of those people like Halloween Kills because what they watch Halloween Kills are like. I seriously have seen a lot of fans of like Rob Zombie's Halloween, Halloween six, Halloween four. They go, Oh, Halloween kills was awesome. The kills were awesome. And that's fun. That that's fine. Cause to me, like you said, fans, it's not even just fan service. It's just like, it was to me, it was Danny McBride and uh, David Gordon green recognizing that. Hey, Hey, fans of Halloween two, fans of Halloween four, uh, five, six, Rob Zombie's Halloween one and two. We like those movies too. We like this whole entire franchise. And uh, this, this, this one's for you. This is for you guys. Like, we're with you. We hear you. We're not, we didn't, we didn't forget about you. So here's Halloween Kills. We didn't forget about you. And to me, you didn't have to do that. Because this movie is not appealing to the general audience and the, and, and the masses. This is not a general audience movie. This is a violent, very violent, very slasher-esque movie. Throwback slasher-esque movie. Violent as hell. A lot of kills. This is not a mass appeal movie. So for them to kind of take a chance and kind of put this middle chapter and go, here, this is for all the fans of the other Halloween movies. That's a big gamble, and I can I commend them for that. Salute them for that. And I appreciate it. And most of those fans do like this movie. But there are some fans of 2018 uh, or some fans who didn't like 2018 who still will hate on this movie. And it's like they don't like either one. And it's like they – but they'll stick up for other movies in the franchise. And it – to me, that's when I shut off and I go, okay, you're obviously just trying to nitpick, naysay, all that shit. And to me, it's just, it's getting exhausting. And it's not towards any one or two or three people in particular. I've just had this discussion with multiple people in Facebook groups 
uh, and personally. And it's just like, it's getting to the point now where it's like, okay, I'm just going to have fun with these movies. I'm going to enjoy these movies with people that, you know, my friends, obviously in here, everybody here, we're all going to enjoy them together. And we're just going to eat some, get some popcorn, get some drinks, get some Apple Jack Daniels. Yeah, and we're going to just sit here and we're all going to watch these movies and we're going to have a goddamn ball with them and we're going to have fun with them. And then we can also sit there and talk about the complexity of them and dive deep into how like legit they are as far as like the realism is concerned, the real life trauma and everything else, because you could do that too. That's why these are fun. But I'm not, I'm going to take my nostalgia glasses off and I'm going to stop sitting here and hating on these movies just because my 10 year old self wants to sit there and go like, don't let go. Don't let go, please. Please don't let go of those other movies. Please, please don't. Because uh, so I feel like it's happening. My child is sitting there going like, no, let go, Jack. Like in Titanic. Don't let go. So we got it covered. Yes, Apple Jack. Dan- Thank Yeah, That's right. Woo! Um, let's see. It's been a minute since I saw 2018. Remind me, that movie, does he kill? Yes. And there's a scene where he chooses to kill. Well, that's the thing. That's what, and we talked about it last one that was so great. It was, we thought it was done so well, is that the first kill in this, in that 2018, um, now it was to get the car, to get the truck or whatever. But yeah, he is behind the kid, like Annie and the original. And he kills, like he kills the kid to get the truck and whatever. But it, it sets up the scene like, oh, Wow, this is the first time on screen that Michael has killed a kid. Yeah, it's a more vicious Michael. So I was kind of, kind of confused why, and I can't remember where we saw it or, or whether it came up in a discussion or something like that. The people thought, you know, 2018, like we didn't see enough Michael and he was a really tame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He took out a child. <laughs> like, I don't a kid. Know how this is a more tame Michael. A kid loved to dance. <laughs> by the way a kid who just loved to dance it just went dance you know like a days of confused but yeah he just wanted he just I, I still thought that, that scene was just yeah like, i know that some people think like oh it's too woke or you know it, it doesn't make sense i i, I disagree I, I i had no issues with it I yeah it it's fun it's it, it, like it's fun it gives a shit. it's who gives that shit there's a lot i just heard a, i saw grown uh, listen you get some apple Apple Jack Martinis in me or Apple Jack Martinis. Apple Jack, uh, whatever in me. I'm just Apple yeah. Jack's on the rocks. Apple Jack's on the rocks, motherfucker. <laughs> but you get them in me, you get me at a wedding. Shit. Shit. I'll dance like a motherfucker out there. Dance. Yeah, just one day. Sometimes kill animals. Yeah. Dance. Yeah. If you ask me right now, I uh, won't go outside and shoot some deer. Or if you want to sit there and talk to me and say, like, like, hey, you want to go to a wedding and get all flipped up and dance the journey? I'm going to be like, I want to go to the wedding. Let's go. Bring the beers. I'll bring the beers. I'll bring the beers. I'm going to be in Wedding Crashers. I don't want to be in, uh, what's, the, what's the movie? Deliverance. Don't be the scumbags. I, don't, I, want to be, I want to be in Wedding Crashers. I'd rather do that than Deliverance. I'm just saying. It's not, it's like, it's his personal preference. If you like to hunt, by all means, that's fine. But God damn, people are like, child likes to dance. this okay. child likes to fucking party. He likes to dance. And that's my kind of kid. His dad was understanding. And his dad was cool it's about it. We had a Rob Zombie yeah. Fire, you know, where we were yeah. down, you know? Exactly. Supportive father. Fearful. I ain't going to sit there and let you dance like a pansy. I want you to go up there and we're going to go fishing and hunting. No, he was like, all right, Roger Slane, we're going to go fishing, but uh, I mean, we can go to dance. Crack. You like it? All right, we'll go to dance. I'm like, yeah, that dude's cool. That dude's awesome. And the kids actually, I love that conversation. But then that kid gets taken out. So you know right from the get-go that Michael is taking, it's like, oh, wow, he just killed a kid on screen. Holy shit. Shit's real. So he takes the truck, and then later on, when he passes by, when, you, when he's in that house and he kills Mrs. Elrod, uh, for the second time, well, the second at Mrs. Elrod. And then you hear, it's, you don't even see the crib yet. You don't even see it yet. You just hear the baby crying in the background. You, you it's the, the camera is following Michael behind him. Your gut instinct, we were watching the theater. The, the first thing we thought it was, the whole theater was like, oh my God, he's going to kill the baby. Because that's your that's the first place your mind goes is because that first kill has set up the expectation that he's capable of anything. And he just bludgeoned. Yeah, just- and age has no. Is, is no. 
No, not at all. And he killed he killed the, the you know the investigative journalist. He killed them at the at the gas station. You saw what he did to the gas station people, the, the mechanics. And then you see what he did to Miss Zellrod. It's like, oh, sweet baby Jesus. This this he's gonna kill a baby on screen. And it was it was out of shot. It was out of shot too. The baby was below the camera angle, so they didn't have to show it on screen if you really wanted to do it. It was scary. You heard the baby cry, and it just made you think. Now, if you would have done that in Halloween 6 or Halloween H2O, where you hear baby cry, you'd probably be like, oh, it's a baby. But you wouldn't immediately go there. But because they said at the expectation, it was there from the get-go. Like, oh, my God, he's going to kill it. And then when he looked at it, and he sort of tilted his head a little bit, and the baby stops crying, it's like, First of all, it's funny because the baby stops crying. But second of all, it's like, oh my, uh, oh, is he? And he just sort of just walks away. And it's like, it makes you, again, it makes you think, well, did he choose not to kill it? Was he curious? What the hell is going on up there? Is he thinking about like saxophones or unicorns? Like, what is, what is going on up there? He's thinking about his mom. On a white horse. A, on, a, on a white <laughs> horse, apparently, going, kill for me, Michael. Kill for me, Michael. <laughs> God damn it. And remember that one scene with the, the, the there's like Halloween, like there's a big feast or some shit. I don't fucking know. That movie was so goddamn weird, Halloween too. Whack a doodle. Jesus Christ. I get it. Art house, cool, but bro, dude. And it's like And aesthetically, there were some interesting parts and you know, it, it you know, the cinematography was good in some respects. Yeah. Not enough to, to redeem that film. No. And you could sit. The two films. Right? And y'all could sit there and watch that movie and just look. And if people who say, well, that was his, originally he wanted to do. No. Because maybe in his mind. Yeah. But if that was the case, all he had to do was in those scenes with Michael, just drop a white unicorn in there. A white horse. White horse. A little white horse statue. Because that to me told me that he was already thinking about it. But he obviously wasn't. He obviously got from Halloween 1. He only agreed to do Halloween 2 if you have full creative control. Got on Halloween 2. And then he sat there and, and he goes, how about fucking horses? How about that? It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Again. Sherry. Sherry, I, I got your part. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm, I'm going I'm to write you in there somehow. But I'm dead. I got I got it. Don't don't question. I, I'm going I'm to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. And then he puts her in there. And there's a white horse. And they show a scene they had to shoot with a new kid because they couldn't get the older Michael kid because they didn't shoot a scene with a white horse because he didn't think of it. And then it's just like your pigeonhole in this story. It's like, well, what in the fuck is going on here? What is happening? Um, I still think the white horse thing was way. Yeah. I think David Lynch would be hurt by that. <laughs> yeah. David, David Lynch probably like, no, David Lynch like, keep oh, me no, away no. from this. But I agree with you. He was trying to go for this, like, which is funny because Halloween 2, as crazy as it was, that's what we probably would have. People who say, well, I can appreciate Halloween 2 because Halloween 2 at least was his original vision and that it wasn't just a, like a, a rehashing of the original. That's what he wanted. It gives you an idea. That's what Rob Zombie wanted to do. It was only that we got Rob Zombie's Halloween 1 because the studio stepped in and was like, dude, Rob, yo, chill the fuck out, bro. Relax. This is like a Halloween movie, not a, some crazy ass movie. They stepped in and they were the, the sort of the middle ground. That's why we got what we got: the R-rated version and the unrated version. And the only re and it was so he said it was such a headache because they were trying to control your crazy ass. Yeah. Not like personally, I, he's not a bad guy. I, I don't know him personally, but well, like creatively, good. I think he's a good director. I don't think he's a good writer. And it's a good segue because Michael brings up in the chat that you know. There, there are things that Rob Zombie does right, and there are things to respect, even if we dislike his treatment of the Halloween films. Yeah. Yeah, there are parts to him, which is why him doing Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a that, great that idea. Makes, I never thought of that. That makes a, yeah, I don't know why, a lot of sense. I always, I always thought like Grindhouse, but for some reason, my brain never put Grindhouse, Texas Chainsaw Massacre in there. But yeah, you're right. Absolutely perfect. It would. I mean, his movies always seem like hot, and, and like there's always that like warm temperature color and like it just seems like sweaty and people are like i'm all fucked up here Hello! and just like okay all right all right Woo, here we go Demi yeah exactly we're in illinois and hadfield illinois people are like oh fuck them no like race class 
Yeah, and and God, what if, when we what the day we do the the Rob Zombie Halloween one and two commentary, woo wee! That's gonna be a fun one. Oh my lord, that's gonna be fun. I can't wait for that. <laughs> oh my god, oh, it is amazing. Yes, I agree. Um. But you shouldn't be like no, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. Director, fine. Cinematographer, he's a, he has that the guy whoever did the cinematography on uh, Halloween two, um, that who he's had for a couple of movies, they were good. Uh, but yeah, uh, as far as when it comes to um, dialogue and writing a script, no, 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 no. get that out of his hand. Um, completely agree with Michael about zombie has his own aesthetic and I can respect that, but he was not. Yeah. And it, uh, Mike Holtz from, we watched the movie said this, like Rob zombies movies, they just seem mean, like mean spirited. And I kind of agree with them. Like they're just not enjoyable for me to watch. And I even like that with the paranormal activity movies, even though they're not really mean, they just, there's no, there's no hope, no chance for your protagonist, which I don't like to watch to me. It's like for a one-time watch. Okay, fine. But I like my protagonist to be able to fight back or at least have the chance to fight back. Well, talk about the movie so, as much as I love the first paranormal activity for what it sets up, that the, the male character in that is such a jerk. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think every time we watch it, you get frustrated with him. Yeah, it gets to the point where it's almost almost, almost like, like comedic. Like, it's like, this is like so over the top, yeah. this guy. It's like, this has got to be like tongue in cheek. Uh, Matt, what's your favorite Rob Zombie film? Oh, God. It's probably Devil's Rejects, probably. But even that, I don't really enjoy watching. His Rob Zombie, his Halloween won to an extent, but I don't like what he does with Halloween, so I don't really like it to that much. Uh, that much. Uh, House of a Thousand Corpses, I don't even really... Um, to me, that that cre- there's parts of that movie that really creep me out. Um and it's got some really good ideas, but the whole I there, there's a lot of stuff in that movie that are just really just again mean spirited. Like I don't like I haven't watched it in years because of that. And same thing that was rejects. Just like I have no desire to revisit those movies. If he just toned it down on the mean spiritedness, I'd be so much more like intrigued and involved with his movies. Um, but I don't know, man. It's a tough call. Probably Devil's Rejects. Maybe Halloween 1 is one. And that's like, I hate saying that because I, I don't want to seem like I'm favoring the Halloween movies and like I only like the Halloween movies, but I just don't care to watch his other movie. House of a Thousand Corpses, again, creeps me out, but there's a lot of mean-spirited shit in there. Uh, aesthetic, blah, blah, blah. Heading out at night, Leanne, Michael, Melissa, Katie, and every this is from Elizabeth. Heading out for night, Leanne, Michael, Melissa, Katie, and everyone. It was a pleasure. Love this one. Thanks for bringing us together. No problem. Thank you so much for saying that because I I feel like this happened naturally. I don't want to take credit for it. This is awesome. It's the it's the Michael films. It's Michael and Loomis and John Carpenter and you know let's um and just the movies in general for bringing us all together. Movies, love movies. Movies are awesome. And that's what brought us here. But thank you for hanging out, Elizabeth, as always, uh, each and every time, like you always do. You're awesome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you're awesome, Elizabeth. MVP. <laughs> Obviously, Melissa, too. But you're all MVPs at this point. I mean, you've all been showing up every single time. I think that everyone has showed up yeah. at least once, if not more, before. Yes. So thank you, as always, for the support. It means a great deal. Yep, it means a, it, I can't explain how much it means. It's like Katie Wu... Even though I don't think it's your real last name, but I was just say Katie Wu because of Facebook. Katie, I know you're on the other side of the pond, and it's like I don't even know what time because I don't know time like that. Woo-hoo, yeah, but I know for a fact that it's not easy for you to do this. So the fact that you're um, you're trying and you're 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 doing it and coming through and hanging out is awesome. So um, thank you so much, um, Matt. His films, yes, I agree. Um, yeah, was a nice chat with you tonight. Yes, this was awesome. I saw uh, Matt. I saw House of a Thousand Courses with my mom back in 2001. <laughs> I can't even get through that sentence. I'm just picturing you watching House of a Thousand Courses with your mom. God damn it, that's got to be awkward as shit. Uh, I was 13 maybe, and she walked out. She walked out 20. She walked out 20. Yeah, dude, 
that's that's awkward as hell. I'm just picturing that in my brain right now. That's so awkward. God damn. 20 minutes in. 20 minutes in. That's exactly what I'm picturing. That's why I started laughing. I didn't even read the whole thing. I just saw it. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Awkward. awkward as hell. Because there's some cool parts to it. It's like, oh, man. The whole, you know, uh, Dr. Satan thing. And, oh, that's cool. And some... The nudity, yeah. This, it's all within twenty minutes, and you're probably sitting there with your mom, like, "Oh shit!" It's all good. It, it's it's weird. It, not weird, but it's creepy. It's got a cool Halloween atmosphere to it, and uh, sort of like a throwback, sort of like like the creepy house that they go to when they investigate. There's some really creepy, cool stuff to it. Old school clown shit with the you know the everything. So there's some cool parts to it that it's really. I really want to watch it. I would love to just edit my own version of it, but there's a couple of scenes later on that you're just like, Oh, Oh, that's not like, that's just, I don't know. Nah, nah. Almost like not, not as bad as terrifier, but, but we do not utter that. yeah, but not as bad as terrifier, but there's they're very tame compared to terrifier, but there's parts of where you're just like, Oh, this isn't cool. So yeah, just seeing that. Yeah. Um, 20 minutes in God damn um hashtag get what does that mean you have to keep reading yeah i'm <laughs> i'm tired sorry trying to say get is it a mic i have a mic for melissa okay elizabeth before you go to bed i want to be clear i have a second microphone i have offered this to melissa the very first live stream i offered it to her if she well if she was going to be partaking in like as a main contributor i said I have a second mic. You could easily plug it in to your computer and you can wear that. She didn't want to do it. Now, I'm no, not, no, I'm no, not, no, wait, 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 wait. I'm not back. Wait. With, with music stream yard and having two audios come in. And that's why I forgoed the mic. We could have used, we, I offered the splitter and we could have, if we were far enough apart, I said, if we were far enough apart, that we could have figured because all you need to do is put headphones on and the echo doesn't reverb. We could have figured it out. You, we'll, you, but you, we'll but, work on it. but remember, I said, remember, you said they're going to hear everything then, everything I'm doing. And even if I don't want to be on the microphone, I said, you just got to click the mute button. And you were like, well, that seems like too much work. <laughs> and I said, that actually seems like my job. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I was all like, right, well, point is, I tried. So. Will, there is no silencing of Melissa here. I just want to be very clear about that. I've tried to make this work. I know this is going to be, going to be like, why doesn't he let her speak? <laughs> she, He's trying to silence her voice. He's trying to silence her voice. Stand up, Melissa, and speak for yourself. No. I'm not saying that you're saying that, Elizabeth. I'm just saying I, I, I was trying to problem solve this and i was trying to <laughs> i was trying to figure it out troubleshoot it and it was just very much like as ah, whatever fuck it. i didn't give a care i didn't even care i don't care i didn't care, care. care. they'll just like hear me on the night i was like care look here i was like care. that's Saturday Night live by the way if you don't know that reference it's 4 20 and i'm a night out it's my regular hours that's all <laughs> katie woo we as the Ric Flair reference right there. Oh Lord, four twenty. God bless you, Katie. You're awesome. You're awesome. I I feel bad. I will I I will try to get these earlier. I'll try to mix it up. I won't always do these late. But it's so awesome that you're hanging out. So cool. Thank you so much. Does not go unnoticed, and I appreciate it. Um, at all. I'll take it. Said it takes a little not. Uh, ooh, didn't think about that. That's a good point. I'll take it as he takes mine, but she be better not. I'll be so mad. Um, Leanne, I'm a zombie fan as well, and I completely agree. His dialogue stays pretty consistent, so I'll give him that, but I don't feel like it fits with all Halloween. Yeah, agree. I don't blame him for trying to do Halloween. I blame Dimension Films and the Akkads and everybody else for trying to for signing him on to do Halloween. Um, was it the Merrimax or Dimension Films? That was their mess up, not his. He was just getting a paycheck, and he likes Halloween, so I don't blame him. Um, Terrified. The biggest ways of potential new. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I thought Terrifier, the clown, Art the Clown is so creepy. He is so creepy. 
And the actor who portrays him, people say like, oh my God, you're going to bash that actor. No, I'm not bashing the actor. I'm not bashing the design. I'm not bashing him at all. The actor who portrays him, good Lord, it is unbelievably creepy. And the whole mime thing and everything involved with it, absolutely terrifying. It's so unsettling. And I completely agree 100% with you that that character is, has so much potential in the right hands. But that movie and the, the, the All Hallows Eve, the uh, anthology movie that came before it, is so fucking awful. And it's so bad. It's so bad. And it's not on a bad on a good way. Bad, like a dull, b- like boring. Yeah, shock stuff as far as like violence and the gore and the kills. But the ne- but the movie goes, there's nothing, there's nothing to it. It's like, uh, what? People talk about dialogue. The movie, the, the dialogue in that movie is just, what? The acting in that movie, what? The point of that movie, what? Nothing makes sense. And it's like, oh, God damn it. I got, I got, I tried to watch that movie numerous times. Michael, numerous times I've tried to watch Terrifier, at least three to four. I've tried. I really tried to sort of say, okay, I'm going to watch this because people really think it's good. I must be missing something. And I watch it again. And I'm just like, fuck, this is awful. This is so bad. I, 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 I'm, I want to do something else because I don't like it. I just don't, I'm just on board. Ah, um, let's see, Matt. I had no idea what it was. It was Rob Zoe's first film. I think it was the scene after their Halloween dinner. Talent show, I guess you can call it. Oh, God. We're going to probably yell, eat something. Grandma, I won't say on the live, but if you know, you know. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. God damn. That movie, that's like Texas Chainsaw Massacre in itself. Um, Michael Johnson to the end. Do you have a favorite Rob Zombie film? Uh, is there any room for her to sit on the other side of you to be closer to your mic? I try to get her closer. I told her to come. If she doesn't want to be on camera. And I told her to come sit right here earlier. If you notice in the stream, I was like, here, sit here. You're not on camera here. She was like, she was like, ew. No, I lose my footrest. <laughs> she lo- oh, that's it. She loses her footrest. She's like, eh. eh. What is it? What did the kids say? Um, Cuties. Yeah. <laughs> She doesn't want to be anywhere close to the camera. I think because she's her job and everything else, she doesn't want to like, you know, because I say some ridiculous shit, but um, which I don't blame her. I mean, if you're not really, if you don't really know how your job is going to react to that kind of stuff, that's fine. But like, I've tried to get her to get closer. I've, I've tried the ca- The microphone was on this side too, but it was in the same, basically the same spot. Um, but I, I tried to figure it out. We'll figure it out for sure. Definitely. Um, Melissa rocks. There you go. See, thank you, Melissa rocks. Melissa rocks. Ohio. Um, hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. I believe you. With that, all right. Good night, Elizabeth. Um, I might have to give it to Devil's Rejects, but I find that I return the house without the corpses more than the others. Yeah. See, I'm the same. Put that on the yeah, I'm the same way. I, I same way I, devil's rejects is probably the better overall movie it's funny devil's rejects is probably like halloween 2018 in the sense of like it's a better movie but uh house of a thousand corpses is probably more like halloween kills in that it's so over the top and wacky and just like you know just woo like wow it has more entertainment value so it has more rewatchability you can go back to it more whereas devil's rejects is more like a film film but it's still got that sort of violent aspect to it. But yeah, that hacksaw scene, Christ, I've, yeah. I won't watch it on that principle alone. Yeah. I, don't, I think that's just gratuitous. Katie, I saw that movie. First time I watched it, I didn't even watch it with her. She has never seen that movie, this movie. I Without even her like, in the room, I watched it on my own. I wanted to see what this movie was all about. Then we got to that. I got to that scene and I was like, is he really gonna? Is that really gonna? Is this gonna like like? He's not really gonna. He's re- uh, oh really? What the fuck? And I just was like, what in the fu-? now? Like to me, it was like okay, if he's doing that to strike fear into the other character, fine. But it's not what's happening. It's not. It's just there to be there. And what really made me more pissed off is that I watched All Hallows' Eve, and there's a similar scene, not similar, but 
there's a there's a sort of like a shock scene towards the end where nothing has happened, but it's in the after effect of you see a character sort of like, you know, sort of still alive and stuff that happened to her by Art the Clown. And that made me check out even more. I was like, go fuck yourself, movie. Seriously. And I, I don't, to me, it's a, it's a guy who does practical effects really well. No offense to the director. Look, I know he. it's a passion project for him. Good for you. I'm not... I, I, this is not my criticism of his a person. This is just on his work and well, how I feel based on his movies. But after that movie and it's the third time watching it and then after watching How, All Hallows Eve and that scene at the end of All Hallows Eve, I was like, wow. And I'm not saying this about him, but it was like somebody is has some pent up anger towards the female, like, like the woman. The, the 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 lady the lady friend the the, the womb women in general something is going on he needs a hug because you don't just do because you don't yeah you you see guys get killed in really some gruesome fashions but not to that extent when it comes to private parts or like specific areas of the genitalia or sense you don't see that when, when you see dudes on the screen it's just head chopped off and that's it that's it but when it comes to the women, it's like specific towards those areas. And not even that on at the end of Hall All Hallows Eve, there's stuff like carved into like it's like what? Scream four did have a, a private part shooting, but that's it. Otherwise I can't think of any private part shoot. Yeah, shooting. Yeah. But I don't know if I've ever seen any other But she had motivation. He cheated on her, right? Yeah. So it kind of makes sense in the th and then she's no, also no, I'm, I'm just thinking of examples in which there's sort of Bone time, bone tomahawk's another one, yeah, yeah, but that's but those, but they weren't even doing that. That wasn't a sexualized killing in bone tomahawk. They did it because they were. It was like they were doing it with a chicken or like some sort of live like cow, or which is nasty to think about. But they were, they were. Um, what is it when you? Uh, yeah, you, they, they were cannibals. They were cannibals in bone tomahawk. So what they were doing was essentially doing that because they were getting ready to eat a eat a meal, which is nasty, but. We do that to animals. This, what would happen in Terrifier and All Hallows Eve had nothing to do with eating a meal, had nothing to do with eating people. Torture. It was torture porn and it was specific, not even towards like a, a finger. It wasn't even like, oh, it's towards women, a finger, an arm, an eye or whatever. It was towards women and it was towards specific parts of women that was just like, okay, so you're not even going to try and hide. So people say like, oh, but it was, it's just throwback slasher. Like, uh, it, it felt what? like it was throwback slasher, but it's almost like turned it up to 20. Turn, Not even 11. Like, turn it up to 20. Like, we're going to take every bit of suggestion that these that these movies have, and we're just going to lay it all out there. Yeah. It, oh, dude. The, but again, I haven't seen this. Maybe if, you, if, you've seen all, if you've seen All Hallows' Eve, at the, if you've seen All Hallows' Eve, the anthology movie, and you've seen that last end scene – that's what set it off as far as like, wow. Okay. So people who try to excuse Terrifier as that scene not have anything to do with sexuality, there's something to me that was the nail in the coffin of telling me that something you're obviously used to movies that just do this towards women and movies. That's fine, but we're not in those times anymore. If you're gonna have a throwback slasher, do it, but do it towards both. Like it's obvious that it was towards a certain whatever. If you'll see it, you'll know it. that's what term like I was completely turned off from Terrifier, but that last scene in All Hallows Eve just confirmed it for me that okay, there's no okay, whatever. And, and yeah, and probably not to start off with completely biased. Like I yes. have issues with other films, like I have never seen it, but I'm familiar with the plot. Uh, last house on the left. Um shoot, there's another one I just have in my brain as well that I won't see. Uh Spit on Your Grave. Like yeah. I just it, to me, and I know some of that kind of crosses over into like revenge horror, and you know, some people make the argument that that's feminist in some sort of way. But I just I think that the horror genre has enough violence towards women, and again, I can I can still appreciate this films while recognizing that is a major flaw and a critique that I have. Um, but some films, I just I won't give them the time of day because I think it goes too far. Yeah, and that's when people complain about. Like, oh my God, I'm like, I have to, I got to agree. 
if you would have asked me probably like 10, 20 years ago, I probably, you know, 20 years ago, but like 10 years ago, I probably would have like, you know, said like, I probably would have argued against Melissa and said like, well, it's not that bad. But like, I can honestly look back at these horror films and these sort of like, you know, you know, 80s slasher movies and the torture porn stuff and kind of look back at it and really look at it from an analytical eye and uh, an objective eye and kind of go, oh yeah, there was, there's not a whole, it is, it is towards one specific, you know, yeah. Wow. Yeah. The guys don't survive, but it's mostly about women stalk brutalized sexuality stuff's played in there there's i mean there's a rape subgenre of 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 what is it uh what do they call them rape movies or rape revenge rape revenge is a subgenre in horror movies now there's not a lot of whole lot of male rape revenge sub horror it's just it's women so it's like deliverance no no uh, recent film violation yeah viol- yeah violations and yeah exactly and you don't even get yeah and that's even different it's but it's like I can I can watch these and kind of go like okay I get it I get it like I get because you have to you have to look at it and stop being so blind that like the, the movies of the past and you can appreciate those movies while still looking at when you're making new movies and kind of go yeah we can probably just change up a little bit make it a little fair you don't have to go after like ah well not to get on the soapbox but for a lot of women be, be, I mean maybe not to the extent that horror films do it but like stalking and brutalization is not just something that's in the movies it's a reality yeah to dudes so a yeah lot of women they don't necessarily want to watch that on screen and that's probably why there aren't as many female fans specifically of like a horror or excuse me slasher genre of horror yeah um and of course there's also this aspect of like why do we go to horror movies because it gives us a controlled scare environment we're able to feel scared feel frightened but control you know that sense of uncertainty and that sense of fear but it, it can cross a line to where it seems like it's almost taking pleasure in its brutalization yep. of somebody. And I think that's where some people get really turned off. And, that, and that's certainly kind of my line. Yeah, Leanne and Katie, you can you can speak on this. But what 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 made me no disrespect yeah. And what we, what made me change my mind was it was was that like for a lot of horror fans and a lot of horror fans are dudes not all horror fans are dudes it's but it's a lot of guys and um i would like for women to be more involved with horror and i think women do like scary movies they just don't like slasher movies and the violent movies i've noticed that a lot of women tend to like like the paranormal the scary like the ghost ones and stuff like that like which means they like to be scared they like horror movies but they don't like the slasher movies. They don't like the re- revenge movies. They don't like that sort of stuff. And to me, that tells me, like, like Melissa was saying, it's too close to hits too close to home. Yeah. Yep. And Leanne and Katie, you guys can speak on this. Um, and anybody else who watches this afterwards, if you, if you feel comfortable speaking on it, but it's like, what I've what made me realize it was like okay, even though these are popcorn fun and maybe sort of like hey yeah fun for me and guys like me, but when movies are like that, it's like you guys women sort of have to go through that fear every day of like potentially that happening to you just by walking down a dark street, and dudes, yeah, we can sit there and talk about like. Oh yeah, you don't know if someone's gonna creep up on you. That could happen, yes. But a, you don't walk around thinking that could happen unless you're down a scary alley, yes. But one, or by yourself. But we don't walk around thinking of, oh, we could get. If I'm not careful, I could get sexually assaulted today. You, we just, it, we don't think like that because it doesn't really happen like that. Like you know what I mean? So it's like. It doesn't happen as frequently. As I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, yeah, I meant as frequently. So these movies, even though they're escape for men for women it's just like okay i can understand why they don't want to watch it's like i i don't okay this is really like like why yeah this is i have to worry about this every day so why do i want to watch this so i get it i totally get it um and matt says i have a confession i know we have similar tastes but i love to wow i did not expect you to like terrifier and david howard Thor- that's his name david howard thornton is a cool guy he may be a cool guy and uh, Rob Zombie's a cool guy too. But when it comes to their vision on the screen, uh, 
I don't know, man. Really don't know. Um, if terrified are good if you know what you're getting into. Um, if you like that kind of stuff, it's good. I still can. I still insist that they're like terrifier it's not a good it's not a good movie it, it, I've, I've tried to watch that movie numerous times if you like that stuff i like art the clown if i could edit a, together a movie with art the clown that's great and all the stuff that he's creepy about dude awesome but when it comes to that other stuff i'm like eh. and it just goes nowhere and it's just like when you get to like three quarters of the movie the second act is like cer certain things happen just like that eh. I'm just like, I just throw up the towel. I'm throwing the towel. Like, all right, this doesn't make any sense. There's just no point in watches. Art of Clown is one of the craziest characters I've ever seen. Yep. And David is amazing. Play. Yes, he is. Damien said that the second one will have more dialogue and more of a backstory. She's over two hours. I wonder, I'm starting to, I wonder if he's going to overcompensate for the criticisms of uh, Terrifier 1. Not in the brain of violence. I think he's going to go, I think he's going to dive into the violence. I think he's going to go, Terrifier 2 is going to be even wilder because he's a special effects guy. Uh, David Howard Thornton. He, yeah, he's a practical, he's all in the practical effects. So that's, he does that stuff. So that's why there's so much in Terrifier. It's like he, he makes it a part of it. That's why they're so good. So Terrifier too, I think he's going to dive real into it. But as far as the script and the dialogue and the story, the backstory and explain, I wonder if he's going to overcompensate, which directors like John Carpenter and other directors have been known to do when they have to do sequels to a character that they don't really want to explain too much when they get criticized, like it doesn't make any sense. They try to go, ah, let's figure something out. And they do it. And then after the movie, it's like, oh, fuck, I should have did that. I shouldn't have did that. God damn it. Um, let's see, Matt. Don't judge. I'm not judging you, man. Not at all. You should do your top 10 favorite Laurie Strode moments. That'd be bad. Hey, you probably could make, make probably could make a, a video out of that. Um, God love the soundtrack on how, yeah. Yes, the House of a Thousand Corpses soundtrack is really good. Just that vibe of that movie is very Halloween-y. Very, it's a good Halloween movie if you just cut out some of the bullshit. Um, I could probably watch that movie and skip past the mean spirited stuff, um, if I could. But uh, it's better than, other stuff, yeah. Not good. Not a good. Like really, no purpose to it. Doesn't serve any purpose to the plot whatsoever. Yep. Have I seen the Terrifier 2 trailer? Um, no, I may have seen like little part, I, uh, parts of it. I, I, there's a part of me that is intrigued by Terrifier 2 just for the sense of like, because just cause I'm wondering where he's going to go with this. But there's a part of me after seeing All Hallows Eve, after watching uh, Terrifier 1, I, there's a part of me just I, out of all the movies that I'm excited to see, horror movies for 2021 20, and whatnot, Terrifier 2 was just not on that list. I'm curious. I hope he does better because I really like the character of Art the Clown, but I just, yeah, not really excited. Um, yes, the ending of All Hallows. Yes. Doesn't it, and it really, what's the point um, for All Hallows Eve? Bone Tomahawk was a split scene. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Art, mo again, Art mostly seems to have a fascination with heads, but then he's, Blair and two his fundraiser was to create a scene to top that one so his fundraiser was it was to create a scene to top great so i'm really wondering what happens there yeah maybe he'll split a peen uh <laughs> but i doubt it um uh, i know exactly what you're talking about with carving the word yeah mm -hmm. so i know what you mean yeah it to me and i saw that after terrifier one but to me, there are people who are arguing, it has nothing to do sexually, that scene. It was just clear, just throwbacks. So, and I insist, I was like, there's, okay, if you want to instill fear in that one character, I can get it, but there's other ways to do it. But once I saw All Hallows Eve and I saw that last scene, I was like, okay, wait a minute, hold on. There's like, it's fairly, you're not trying to hide anything here. Like there was no point. There was nothing about this character that, that conveyed any of that. And you carved those words into it for what? What is the purpose? Why did you? Ah, what is the? Ah. <laughs> um, I'm right there with you, Matt. <laughs> Shout out to Slumber Party Massacre 1982. That's one of the early feminists. Yeah, that's true. That is very true. I haven't seen that, so we'll have to give that, we'll have to give that a watch. 
Yeah, and they just remade it too. We rebooted the people. Said, oh, they don't understand that the reboot. I haven't watched the reboot yet. They don't understand that the reboot was the original version was done by a, you know a woman. And I'm like, would you? I love all the dudes standing up <laughs> and trying to argue these. I, it just it's it, it, I uh, like. I, and anyone else notice that all the dudes standing up and being like, well, actually, when women get raped in these movies, women aren't scared because it's like, well, how the fuck would you know? It, it, the only reason why I even know is because I've actually, what? Yeah. I, the only reason why I even know is because I've heard women tell me and I've read online, like read people like, where people say like, yeah, like, I don't like watching that. It. It's just, what is, I don't, I don't need to watch that. I deal with it every day. I don't need to watch it. That's why I came to that conclusion. I'm not saying it that I'm saying. It. I'm saying it they're saying it. Um, you're not kidding there. I'm always hyper aware of my surroundings because it's, it is. And that's like this. these movies are your escape. And I, it sucks. I, now, I'm not saying that you don't like these terror movies like Terrifier and Rob Zombie movies. But it's just like, I don't know. It, like, like Matt, Mike, Michael, you know, we don't, I guess we like if you like these kinds of movies it's fine like drama movies. like we don't watch real as much like we don't go to realistic indie dramas i do but we don't go to them for escapes we don't go even though i may love um movies like boyhood and stuff like that like movies that really are you know uh what the way way back movies that are like these realistic indie dramas that are just ooh, ooh. Coming of age movies, we go to them to really feel something, but we don't go to those movies to kind of go, I want to escape, grab some beer and popcorn and just enjoy myself with a nice, yeah, with get and just and just sit down and watch Dead Poet Society or like Goodwill Hunting. No, you don't. We watch, you know, horror movies like this, and it's good to get scared and sort of step outside of that. But what a lot of women are saying is just like, we like to do this too. Can we just dial it back with all this other stuff? Because even though you might fantasize about that and get your anger out towards women, what is that thing in, what is that line in Censor? Um, uh, yeah, there's a line in the movie Censor um, that is just perfect um, that describes it, uh, where it's male inadequacy, male inadequacy cathar uh, revenge catharsis. Male inadequacy, revenge, catharsis. And Katie and Leanne, you can comment on that. <laughs> and Matt and Michael, you can comment on that too. Let me know how you feel about that. To me, that line encapsulated perfectly exactly what those movies are about. Male inadequacy, revenge, catharsis. You're mad. You're pissed off at the world. You know, maybe you're not, you know, doing all the things you want. You're not, you know, yeah, yeah and all of a sudden... Maybe somebody didn't go out with you back in the eighth grade or, you know, freshman year of high school and maybe you got dumped a couple of times and who knows, maybe your boss is mad at you and yelling at you and you don't take it out on them. Maybe your dad was mean to you. Who knows? You know, and maybe your mom beat you up. Who knows what happened? But then you take all that pent up frustration that you don't get out because guys are told not to be emotional because we're not emotional. We're tough. I'm not making light. I'm just saying those are what happened though. Those, all those things are not to make light of those situations happen. But whereas we accept that women can sort of, you know, emotional be emotional, which is not right in its own sense. But the fact that you guys, it's more accepted that you can, you can be amongst yourselves. You guys are maybe a little more emotionally um, healthy. Like your health, your emotional health is, is better. Whereas with guys emotionally, we're like, we don't have emotions. We're just, beat it up and throw it out football um which i love football i love sports but that's what we're taught we're taught you know, you know boys don't cry you know you don't play football football players don't cry you know stop crying you know you don't talk about this stuff what you, girl and then all of a sudden how do you get it out well let's go watch a horror movie that <laughs> yeah let's just go yeah stupid stupid women yeah Ah, I felt good. Popcorn. And your girlfriend's sitting there going like, yeah, it wasn't that much fun for me. <laughs> Bye. Same. You're not kidding. Most type of surroundings. I lived in a sketchy area growing up. My dad told me, ooh, nice. 
very good and when i watch these movies i think about how react yeah i do that too yeah i definitely watched at different times and thought well how would i do this how would i escape how would i get out i actually did that once even on a fishing trip practice i was on a fishing trip with my dad in canada and it was at this remote uh cabin like just in the middle of the canadian wilderness they drop you off with a little plane and you know you only have radio contact for the time that you're out there and at the time i remember thinking like if a bear got in here you know, <laughs> what actions would i take if there was some deliverance type situation you know what would be my exit strategy how would i get out so i totally feel you i, I watch these films too and think what would i do how would i act how would i get out you know what would it what would be my means of escape one of the, yeah one of the producers of a horror movie i forget what it was was like uh they called horror movies practice or like you know <laughs> something like that well, you see oh yeah really but like it's it's like you, you one of the i think it's i think it's actually in censor one of the producers of like the friend or whatever just like yeah i uh, yeah they like to think of it as practice for these bad situations like you can kind of or was it censor i think oh no the brother of evil dead or something like that or um the guy who made evil dead um, I, forget, I forget what the guy's name was um i think it's sam Raimi's brother uh said it it was like these horror movies are like it's practice for these bad situations uh they do split peens in some culture leanne as a boy becoming a man <laughs> uh michael terrified she will be like human centipede to uh human, cent human centipede to amped up even for just eh, yeah i'm afraid that that's where they're gonna go uh t chip can you react to uh reanimator eternal it's a minecraft animate really i may have to look into that rain is it reanimator or reanimator eternal I'll look into that for sure. Definitely. Um, I got to save that for later. Uh, make sure I remember to go back. My PhD dissertation focused on critical masculinity work and gender studies. Ooh, interesting. So I'm always interested in these sorts of over-consumatory <laughs> male behaviors that we exhibited. Very similar background, Michael. I appreciate you. Yeah. And the guy, no offense to the Listen, I know there's guys who really do, who are really fragile who get so defensive when anybody even con even brings this conversation up. You can't even have the conversation without them flipping the fuck out every time you even discuss this kind of stuff. They're so touchy feely, which is it's it's annoying and it's bothersome. But in, in a strange way, because I, you know, I, I get the mail. I, I know where it comes from. I kind of understand it in a way. I know how fragile kind of they, they are where it, I know where it comes from. I, yeah, the mask we live in. By the way, Michael, I'm sure you know about this documentary. If you guys all know it, there's a documentary called The Mask We Live In. It's a documentary um, from uh, the same filmmaker who did, um, what was it, uh, Misrepresentation? I think actually, I think it's on Amazon Prime, uh, but um, I believe there's a version of it or two that's on YouTube. Um, it's all about how, you know, that whole deal, the, you know, boys and men and masculinity and emotionless and all that sort of stuff. It's very interesting. It's a way we condition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's a uh, very, very interesting. It's a very good documentary. Actually, the first time I discovered channel, uh, was your yes, that's right. I remember that now. Mike. I remember that. That's a cool take. Ah, cool. That makes me happy. You know, and I had so many walks around the block talking about that movie and, and all the potential yeah. because of what it was, delving into you know relating to to toxic masculinity so yeah that's all awesome. i remember michael i remember you now i remember your comment i remember our conversation back and forth i remember that it's so awesome that you're hanging out for a live stream because that's such that that's that like i remember that and that's awesome it's so cool that you're coming back around and hanging out because it, it was that's an interesting movie for some interesting conversation um the uh, the director of the movie Travis Stevens and CM Punk in general they're just two you're not they're not your typical sort of like you know hey you know you know feminist mask you know sort of like trying to bring up the conversation of masculinity kind of guys but yet here they are like in the, like in the MMA and fighting and wrestling and like tattoos and hardcore music and yet here they are sort of making this project and um, I found that also so fascinating. That's another reason why I found that movie fascinating is because it's coming from that place. Um, and uh, if you don't know Travis Stevens, he's into MMA and he's into that sort of stuff. So CM Punk. 
Um, and the music is even listened to CM Punk is like hardcore sort of like, you know, thrash. it's like, they like that kind of stuff, but it's coming from that place made that movie so much more interesting. And I think it's, it's, it's okay to have these discussions and conversations and it's, it's sort of how we understand it now. And I'm, uh, I remember, I remember our conversation. It's so cool that you're hanging out. It, it's, and I'm, uh, it's awesome. Put it that way. Uh, so I'm glad you're here. There's a theory called, uh, the kill the cheerleader complex. Ooh, guy grows up and blames every other woman for the cheerleader. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. yeah. I wasn't familiar with that. It absolutely makes sense. And I feel like it ties into that, you know, and I don't know if they have a have a name for it, but like the, the nice guy. Yeah. Complex. Oh yeah. Like, you know, Oh, I'm a nice guy. You should love me. You should like me. And yeah, you know, then he's, he might be, you know, resentful when, when a woman doesn't take interest, yep. and takes interest in a man who maybe wouldn't, doesn't treat her as nicely as, you know, the quote unquote nice guy would. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I feel like that kind of ties into the, cheer, the cheerleader complex that Katie's describing. That's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting. And they even, they touch on it a little, not touch on it really. I think they accidentally touched on it, but in, in Friday the 13th part three, where that one, I forget his name, but the one character is just like the one, the the one female character, I forget her name is, she's being nice to the dude. And the dude's just like, you know, well, he's just not, he's just mad because he's not, she's not like hooking up with him. Like she wants to like, he, she was actually being nice to him and actually talking to him. And he was just like, oh, remember, remember that? Yeah. That made me so mad. Now, I don't blame the actor. I blame whoever wrote that part for him. But it's like, yeah. It, it, to me, it's like, look, you got to deal with those issues on your own. You got to figure out that stuff. You can't blame, you know, you use your pent up aggression and anger just because, you know, you didn't hook up with a cheerleader or didn't. Maybe you're just, maybe you just have trouble talking to women. I don't know. Maybe you're, maybe you have issues where your mom wasn't nice to you. Well, again, we don't necessarily, we don't have to, well, I'm, again, but. Where? Again, one way or the other, and sometimes it happens the other way around with the, with the dad. Sometimes you're you know, the dad isn't or your uncle or stepdad or not. It doesn't matter. It yeah, comes again. Away, I'm just I'm just trying to say that it comes from somewhere. Yes, it yes. comes from somewhere, regardless of the situation. It comes from somewhere, and it doesn't get processed. And that's how it kind of comes back around is in this sort of aggression, anger, you know, yes, sort yes, of thing, which is maybe healthy for you, but you got to find another way or another sort of art form to sort of show it because it's not healthy for the other people, the other gender in the, in the situation. That's where it's coming from. Uh, that's interesting though, Katie, definitely. I watch all type horror movies. Uh, so I don't avoid, uh, any that you would consider are aim more towards men. I'm pretty sensitive to everything. Yeah. And that's, and that's fine too. I mean, it, you know, some people could just watch anything and that's completely, that, that's completely fine. Um, you know, some people do, some people don't. It just really depends. Yeah, Le- Leanne has, has eclectic taste just from some of the movies and things that she's mentioned. So she mm-hmm. she has a lot of interest in all different films, which I find interesting. Howling Kills, what do you give it uh, out of 10? Ooh. Ah. Um, and Mike, yeah, Michael, Braid. Yeah, I'll, I remember that. You Exactly. I remember you suggesting Braid. And I, I, it's on my watch list on, um, in my letterbox. Um so I remember that now. Um, out, out of yeah, I'll talk about yeah, I'll talk about that. Halloween Kills. What do you give it out of ten? I rate movies usually out of uh, out of five. So I'm I'm a I'm a out of five star. I'm a five star. I'm a five star man. I'm a five. Uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, always sunny in Philadelphia. Anybody? I'm a five star man. I'm a five star man. Um. So out of I'm gonna rate it a five. Um. Out of five stars. I'm going to say that this may be a hot take or not. Halloween 2018, I think I I gave four out of five. Um, I think it's excellent. I think one being like poor, two being meh. Maybe I should change two to fair because people people say two is like a fair rating. Three is good. Four is like excellent. Five is not masterpiece, whatever I call it. Um, But right now on my current rating, until I change it, Two is meh, which is maybe equal to fair. I will say that um, Halloween Kills, Halloween 2018 is four out of five. I believe Halloween Kills is also a four out of five. As of right now, I'm going to say my gut instinct is that what it lacks in sort of 
drama, depth, dialogue, sort of complexity, it makes up for in the popcorn rewatchability factor, just pure entertainment factor. And that to me, that balances out. To me, they're two different kinds of movies. So I would say they're both four out of fives for me. Um, and honestly, I have to do it. I want to do another re-ranking, re-ranking video coming up. Like I'm going to probably film it this week. Um, it's it, To me, it's on par with 2018. Uh, it's just 2018 is a better film um, where Halloween Kills is a oh, just a lot of fun. So that's kind of where I stand as of this point right now. It's got four out of five. Um, and uh, let's think. So, yeah, I'm the Michael. I'm the one that told you to check out Braid. It's me. Yeah, I remember that. And like I said, it's on my letterbox. Um, I, I put that down and I was like, all right, I'm 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 intrigued by this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, all right. We have Babylon a lot. I may have to, after this, when it's all done and all up on YouTube, I'm going to have to slice and dice, slice and dice this video up and, and put different portions out. Um, you know, just have a cool, full commentary. And then, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll release other parts out um, just afterwards discussion because people are going to be going on going like four hours. What the fuck is he talking about for four hours? Um yeah, Really interesting conversation. Interesting, definitely. It's definitely fascinating for sure. Love the love the conversations that we're all having because I love horror. You love horror. You guys all love horror movies. And whether you're for or against these kinds of movies or whatever, or if, whether what we're talking about, it doesn't mean like Leanne. You like all those movies. Like you don't really just have a bias or doesn't mean that just because we have the discussions doesn't mean that you meet us that we can't watch them or that you can't watch them or anyone should be should feel bad for. Uh, watching them it's just you know discussion so that's why it's cool to have these discussions and i don't see a lot of hard channels doing it which is why i named the channel what i did <laughs> because i really wanted to sort of explore different things uh and explore different movies which i will definitely get into as well there's a lot of indie horror movies that i have not talked about yet that are not mainstream horror or even horror in general um that i'm dying to talk about like the vigil and caveat and wolf of snow hollow and I mean, you're next and backcountry and pie whack it. And I mean, the list goes, yeah. Uh, tragedy girls, tragedy girls, dude. Oh my God. There's the list goes on and on of all the indie horror films that I want to talk about. Benny loves you and stuff. Benny loves you. Yeah. yeah. So many movies. Um, yeah. is people are able to exchange their ideas and opinions and there's there's no judgment there's no you know anger at one another this is just a discussion that's what makes all this stuff interesting yeah matt said earlier like matt and leanne both were like i like these movies and you know like i watch them and matt was like you know you know no judge you know don't judge me i'm like seriously dude that's what we kind of like, kind of want to avoid like it's like sort of like having people sort of say this and sort of expecting to be judged or being shamed on because they do um we didn't want to do that so you don't have to worry about opinion for sure on yeah cases but certainly no disrespect and no judgment yeah exactly um this is this this is a safe space this is a safe space but no kidding it is a safe but no space. kidding really it is it just you know this is the point where we talk about stuff seriously um but yeah have you watched separation i've seen parts but yeah i've seen that i've seen it come up in killer flicks a lot no sounds on peacock as well i check it out I'm going to check it out too. Definitely on my, um, you know, my radar for sure. For sure. Uh, also Garcia critics were mad that it only had Tommy in the movie for a short sequences when he was supposed to be one of the main characters. I thought he had a lot of scenes, uh, and his relationship with Lori was off. Uh, he had one of the major taglines of the movie. Yeah. Evil dies tonight. And uh, to me, Tommy has so many good scenes, so many good lines, you know, come on, get it, man. And like, you know, swing on Huckleberry here. And like, I love Tommy's character, but it wasn't just about Tommy. It was Tommy and Lindsay, and it was mainly about Allison. Uh, but Allison and Karen and Tommy and Lindsay and Lonnie and Marion. And it, to me, this was an ensemble movie, not a not a Tommy movie. I, I thought of this as, a, as an ensemble movie because it's not just about Laurie Strode. Um, and I, want, I think they wanted to make that clear that it just was not just about Laurie Strode. Also, Hawkins. Hawkins as well. Uh, this was a ensemble movie. So to give Tommy 
like have Tommy be the main character. I don't, I didn't expect that to begin with. And I didn't expect them to do that. So you got a little bit of everybody. It wasn't a focus on one particular person's trauma. It was a lot of people's trauma, um, which I liked. Uh, a good indie horror film was Till Death, uh, in my opinion. That, that is on my radar. Uh, it's uh, Megan, one with Megan Fox this year, I believe, right? Yeah, that's on my radar. I haven't watched it yet because there's other movies I want to see first. Uh, but yeah, uh, on my radar for sure. Um, separation I want to watch and Violation is another growing shutter. Viol- watch Violation. Woo-wee. Woo. And Lucky's a good one too. Lucky Lucky was didn't really I struggled with Violation. I appreciate what he's trying to say, yeah. but I struggled. Yeah. And I don't know Michael, I don't know if you've seen those movies. Uh Violation or um Lucky. Lucky is interesting. Lucky's not really the execution wasn't there, but Lucky is, you know, yeah. That one feels more not meta, but it feels more like scream. Yeah. Right? He said, he just said violation equals the most peen you've seen in a horror movie, <laughs> horror film. The most peen you've seen. I know I'm not to get too much into depth and not go too overboard. I go that later, but we were watching it and she was kind of like her eyes. Pe- what? Like, and I was kind of like, I wasn't, I, I wasn't, but like her kind of like, hello. I was like, <laughs> for the ladies. <laughs> like, <laughs> Just let me just say, when Halloween Kills opened up that firefighter scene where I couldn't, I could not close my eyes, and my eyes were glued. Like, oh my god, that was her watching that scene in separation and that violation. I'm kidding. I'm over. I'm being funny, but yeah, that scene in violation. Uh, talk about like, oh, whoa. I was like, yeah. Um, uh, Leanne, oh yeah, for sure. I don't single any of them out, so I could talk all, uh, types of horror films all day. Yep. Totally agree. Uh, the thing is, you should. One of these days, I'll have to do a video on my, on my whole collection. We love all the horror genres, so it's like um, horror just isn't on there. So I love all kinds of different, but horror is so specific. As whereas you can actually have subgenres within horror. That's why horror is so cool. It's so good. Like in that respect. Um, I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna start wrapping up here. I enjoyed Till Death also. Oh, cool. So Leanne liked Till Death as well. Good. All right. I've heard good things about it. So that's a new one with Megan Fox in it that I've been telling you about. Yeah. Um, that must be. <laughs> that's so funny. Michael Johnson. Lucky. I gave it an eight. Violation two. Very good. Interesting. Violation. I give. A, I gave a high score. Lucky. To me, narratively was excellent, and the concept, everything was there. There's a couple of things I think they just missed on, but you're right. It's right below. Like it's to me, it's, 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 it's well, you, you has the same as an eight. It, they're both achieving things in similar fashion, but in two different approaches, but very, very clever movies that sort of make you think you're good. Yeah. Make this sit. You're fine. Um, let's see. Austin, the whole evil dies night didn't sit well with everyone. When Michael only appeared once in 78, um, uh, I you you can go we'll go in you can if you I don't know if you were here the whole night but if you go back and listen to the commentary and watch me talk about it like evil dies tonight was just a, a phrase it makes sense I mean when you try to get a crowd riled up like earlier it was love lives today at the donation thing at the at the at the bar and then Tommy puts the money into the thing and says you know love lives today and walks away and then Marion's kind of sitting there with a couple of drinks in her and just goes but evil dies tonight which yeah okay uh, yeah it was a little bit for, yeah but like w- there's a couple of when you're trying to get a, a a crowd of people all riled up um you know there are chants you know you go to a baseball game it's let's go phillies let's go for you know or like you know e a g l <laughs> and i some you know let's go flyers defense ch- ch- defense you could do this if you ever seen conan o'brien you know the sketch where they have people in the crowd the guy in the crowd who tries to start chants who doesn't know how to start chants you you could have that trying to get a crowd riled up let's go defense because we want them to win to play defense to overcome the uh you know you can't get people riled up if you're like evil dies tonight because we don't want michael to overcome and kill more people 
Come on, everybody, together. Because because Michael is bad and has killed multiple people. Come on, everyone. Because he killed Annie back in 78. You know the words. Because, like, <laughs> like, you can't, if you have a saying that just sort of started and just sort of tailspin, like, stop the steal or, you know. Um, Mobilizing people. That's what Tommy was doing. Yeah, Brown, it made sense. Was like mobilizing people. Because remember, I think Cameron talked about it. He's like, you know, Tommy's getting all these people together, you know, good people yeah. who, who care, who want to stop Michael. Yeah. So, you know, that's sort of like a rallying chant to get them all going. Yeah. And unfortunately, the film shows how that how that happens. And it's not impossible to think that can't happen. Like as we said earlier, look what happened at the Capitol or anywhere else. People. Yeah, starts out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like no more bad wages, no more bad wages. You know, pick, picket signs outside. You know, people are protesting; they don't want higher wages or fifteen dollars now. You know, fifteen, you know, whatever the hell. So it's not that crazy thing about. Is it a little far fetched as far as like is it is it like is it perfect? No, but like I, you know, again, I'll, I'll I'll go back to it. You know, Cookie Woman. Or the other one, you know, the, the the power of the ruin stopped him. Okay, sure, all right, ruins, you know. So I I'm not gonna. I, is it perfect? No, but is it like is it make or break for me? No. Plus, like I said, Danny probably looked at it, probably looked at it. Was like, hey, <laughs> all else fails is a drinking game. When you watch the movie, um, Michael Johnson. Yeah. Oh my God! All the memes that has come out. For I mean, it's perfect, and they knew it. You had to know when they when they saw the final product, they were like, "Oh, this is going to be fucking great!" <laughs> like, not only is it like make sense, but oh my god, this is going to be great. Like, e- there's like a meme with Michael walking around with like the food that like, evil fries tonight. You know, evil dines tonight. He's shopping at the store. Evil, evil buys tonight. <laughs> like, come on, are you? Kidding? I use it to have av- uh, evil streams tonight. Like I d- like it's just oh god, it's so it's so good. Um, Michael Johnson, yes, lucky is strong seven. Yeah, but I don't do halves, so it rounds up to an eight. That's yeah, good. All right, a generous eight. Violation is a solid. Yeah, very much agree. So uh, that's a good point. Okay, if you're going to do it that way, yeah. And uh, Leanne Lawrence, let's go, let's go Red Wings. Ah, oh, she's from the okay Detroit Red Wings fan. All right, very nice, very nice indeed. Well, all right. Before I, we go on any further than Babylon, uh, Austin, go listen. If you if you weren't here earlier, go watch the pod, go, podcast. Go watch the commentary, and we talk about it, break it down more when the movie's going on. Um, and, and if you want, you know, in another time, I'll, I might have like a live stream, sort of like Halloween Kills, sort of like session. Maybe we'll just go we'll all bullshit. We'll talk. Um, or you know, hop on letter uh, Instagram and you know, even comment in the comment section. We'll talk about it. Uh, but yeah. There are flaws, but to me, no more uh, or no worse than some of the flaws that we've seen in a lot of a lot of Halloween movies and horror movies uh, at certain times. So um, uh, Larkin is is killing it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know you guys just started. I know the season just started, but basketball and hockey. But um, I've been trying to catch up so much with the channel and getting stuff ready for Halloween that I haven't even really like my Eagles are struggling. Uh, Flyers are starting strong. And the, uh, the Sixers are starting pretty solid, even though Simmons is out. So, <laughs> and the Phillies didn't make the playoffs, but it's a lot to keep track of. When every waking moment, I'm trying to fill the time with all the movies that I have to catch up on. Um, uh, so uh, let's see, Austin kills Austin last one movie he had the best kills out of the franchise for sure. Didn't get here earlier. Going to go back in earlier. Yeah, it, we we talk about it more in there and break it sort of. We break down the flaws, we break down the positives and negatives, and it's like. The good outweigh the bad for sure. Um, there's lots of flaws and a lot of other. So that's our whole point was if you're gonna sit there and excuse the sins of the past Halloween movies and all the flaws that it had, then you then everybody needs to sort of give these new ones a little bit of a break here because it's like it, it's just it's kind of hypocritical on everyone's part. Um, Leon, it's uh, it's still early. You can watch more after Halloween. That's true. That's true um exactly which is what i intend on doing uh trying to put my attention towards all these different things uh sports daily sports movies uh, series everything um so all right everybody all y'all thank you so much for hanging out 
Yes, I, thank you. Yeah, this has been awesome. Every stream seems to be getting better and better. This is probably the best conversation we've had so far. And we've had many good ones already. We've had a lot of good conversations. Yeah, and it's uh yes very much so and it's it's been analytical it's been fun um we're breaking it down talking about just more things in the movie we're getting into really deep stuff and it's just been so much fun uh chatting with you all and i'm i'm happy as hell we're happy as hell we get to share the sort of passion movies with you um and all things about these movies um you know so and i just i can't thank you enough these live streams wouldn't be anything without you all here and uh and talking about this stuff and it's just been a whole lot of fun. I, I can't even really put it into words. One of these days, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out the right words to say. And thank you all uh, enough and as much and properly for hanging out. It's been awesome. Um, so uh, until next time, I don't know what the future is going to hold for the live streams. It could be, I haven't figured out a schedule yet. I still want to do them. They're not going to, I did it for Halloween in October, um, you know, once a week. Uh, almost twice a week but uh going forward it probably won't be one it we'll see it has to be i have to get sort of get into a rhythm i probably won't do full movies all the time i'll probably have that have that be its own series where it's like movie commentaries are there and then the live streams will be like shorter sessions so we can kind of hang out and bullshit and whatnot but um i will figure that out that's for me to decide and maybe it'll be once every two weeks maybe once a month we'll figure it out but we'll definitely we'll definitely keep it going because this has been really cool um so thank you all for coming and hanging out Thank you all for uh, sticking in there. And here we are all this time later, all these drinks later, and <laughs> we're all still here. You all still here. So uh, I love all you. I want to say, guys, I love all you men and women. Ah, I love I love all y'all. I love all y'all. I love y'all folks. Uh, uh, awesome. Michael, yeah, it's been great. Awesome. Can't wait. Uh, I, I can't wait to hang out with you guys and talk more sort of obscure movies uh, that are sort of under the radar. It's going to be fun um yes you as well leanne everybody uh so matt and elizabeth and uh michael and leanne austin uh katie uh, uh is elizabeth already um james. justin earlier james earlier on uh missy my cousin missy linson yeah i'm i'm if i'm missing anybody's uh yeah katie yeah everybody um great chat great oh thank you katie so much you're awesome you are awesome. She's a great channel. Thumbs up. You're you're the best. You're the best. No, I shouldn't say that. Now I'm being favored. You're all the best. See how hard it is? This is not easy. Uh <laughs> it's all with everyone. Yeah, this has been yeah, awesome. Oh, hell house of you. Yeah. Oh God. That's so cool. That's awesome. That's so nice to know. That's uh, so cool to know. Um, I'm gonna go get some food because I'm starving like Marvin up in there. Um and Leanne, don't forget your mom when she dropped it. I know, right? <laughs> Mama Duke. They're at like uh, my sister's gra my sister graduation. My sister's Halloween party right now. They're all partying uh, back on the other side of the country on the East Coast. Uh, so, you know, uh, they're all having fun. So they, they don't have time for good old Joey bag of donuts right now. They're all uh, doing their own thing. But uh, but yeah, she hangs out. And my brother pops in from time to time. A lot of people. It's just so randomly. It's been awesome. Uh, Ben Simmons to Houston. Have a good night. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll see. Uh, you have a good night too, Austin. And go check out that conversation earlier um, regarding um, the pluses and the, the pluses and negatives about the movie. All y'all, thank you so much. Have a good night and um, take care. Katie, take care, Katie, stay good morning. <laughs> Katie, good morning. Have a good day. Yes. Have, a, have a good day. <laughs> All right. Um, the sun will come out in about three minutes. Three <laughs> minutes. The sun will come out in three minutes. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> uh, good night, everyone. I love y'all. And I will see y'all in the next one. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you.